lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven thank you father for understanding let us grow let us rise in the name of jesus let us become living wonders in the name of jesus christ jesus is speaking here and he's making a very interesting statement please pay attention remember i told us that jesus raised disciples who would later become apostles through a system of discipleship that we called mentorship and the way he started very interesting from matthew chapter one two three four when he was done with his temptation he departed in the power of the spirit right from matthew chapter five until he resurrected every day was a bible study session every day was a prayer session every day was a mentorship session they were exact spiritual truth that he was teaching them he was teaching them on the kingdom reorganizing their understanding about various aspects of the kingdom life he brought many prophecies to lamb light and began to shed light on them he brought many perspectives misrepresentations about the god of the hebrews that they had known and began to correct them then he used parables parables to explain what he called the mysteries of the kingdom are we together and so when we get to the 16th chapter of matthew he's now talking about the keys now theologically speaking there is only one key to the kingdom everybody say to the kingdom there is only one key to the kingdom and that key happens to be the door himself jesus said it this way he said i am the way i am the truth i am the life no man cometh to the father except by or through me so we know that there is only one key to the kingdom there are not many ways almost all of the founders of different religions around the world out of the three to five thousand religions we have currently and growing in the world all of the founders proposed to be the keys of the kingdom that means they are the access point to enter into a certain dimension of life civilization consciousness or reality are we together we have several religions across the world with different founders purporting different facets of the revelation of god but jesus came and made a bold statement that he was and still remains the only authorized access so there is only one key to the kingdom the bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved do you know why i'm teaching you this look up please look up the time has come in the church where we must be biblically sound we must be theologically sound the context of our spiritual communication must be balanced must be intelligent must be theologically sound you must be able to make full proof of your ministry defending the faith by understanding what you believe not just believing blindly are we together the days that we live in would require conviction conviction that comes not only through encounters but through understanding so i'm taking our time to teach you this because many believers are not mentored to understand god the average believer understands different aspects of power glory here and there but the sequential growth this kingdom has an explanation you need to know the way the kingdom was built and how it operates are we together yes so this looks like very basic but it's amazing the level of failure you will command not knowing this there is only one key to the kingdom there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved are we together the bible says in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 8 to 10 it says that um the word is nighty in thy heart and in thy mouth even the word of faith that we preach it says that if thou shalt confess with thy heart the lord jesus thy mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead it says you shall be saved are we together yes 
Then it says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And then with the mouth, confession is made that leads to salvation. So this is the technology that God employed. So when you follow that door, who is Christ, the Bible calls him the new and the living way. He becomes the only access point. If you have not passed through that door, you are not saved. Are we together? It doesn't matter how you are around church, you are not saved. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, John 3, thou art a man, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Then in verse 3, Jesus is teaching now and he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he's talking about being born again now, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Are we together? And then, except a man be born of water, verse 5 now, and the spirit, he shall not enter the kingdom. So we know there is one key, and only key, to the kingdom. But there, when you get into the kingdom, there are the keys of the kingdom. Not a key. The, the basis for access that help us to function in this kingdom, there are many. The laws of the kingdom, the methodologies of the kingdom, you need access to just one key. Jesus, the son of the living God, the new and living way. But when you come into the kingdom, listen carefully. You need to know that there are keys of the kingdom. Say keys of the kingdom. And the sequence is this. Watch this. A believer's, come. You stand here. Face me, please. My friend, please come stand here, face me. No, you stand here. Are we together? My dear, come. Now, watch this. They represent different levels. This gentleman, for instance, is the one the Bible calls a natural man. Everybody say natural man. That means one who is alienated from the life of God. He is not yet a partaker of the life of God through the new birth experience that we call salvation. Is someone learning? You have to understand what I am teaching you. The first ministry that this man needs is not a preacher's ministry. The first ministry that this man needs is the ministry that the Bible calls the goodness of God. Listen very carefully. The Bible says it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance so there is a dimension of the encounter with the goodness of god that this man needs to have and that dimension is sponsored by the holy spirit so the holy spirit is the one who can make this man even have the need see the need for jesus in his life john 16 jesus still in his mentorship session began to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Jesus started by saying, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it, listen carefully, that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you into all truth. Are we together? He shall take of what is mine and shall give to you. Then the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry to the world, the world of natural men. He says he will convict you of three things. Number one, of sin. Say sin. Number two, of righteousness. Say righteousness. Number three, of judgment. Are we together? So it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring this man to a point now he will need the cooperation of a preacher because the bible says how shall they hear except they be a preacher are we together are you understanding the methodology of the kingdom except they be a preacher so god depends on men to allow the ministry of the holy spirit to find expression now this gentleman is sitting in koinonia or any meeting and he hears the word of the lord coming and listen it is not any preaching that saves understand this it is not any preaching that saves there is an exact spiritual information that leads to the salvation new birth 
Now, all truth in the Bible have a measure of light and liberty that they bring. Listen to me. But there is an exact message that turns a sinner to become a righteous person. Are, are you following now? This is a refresher course. We are dealing with the things that many believers do not know that continues to make their life and their assignment within their environment ineffective. Now, it is true that I can teach any message and raise an altar call, but that even if it is in one minute, there has to be a way of routing that altar call such that the content allocated to be captured for salvation is represented there. Are we together? The gospel that saves is called the gospel of salvation. Everybody shout, say the gospel of salvation. Now, there are many gospels in the Bible. By many gospels, we don't mean erroneous gospels. The word gospel just means an announcement of glad tidings. It doesn't have anything necessarily to do with Jesus as it were. It's just a proclamation of glad tidings. The word gospel means good news. Are we together? A proclamation of an information that gladdens the heart. That's what is called gospel. So there is the gospel of salvation. And the gospel of salvation is a message. Everybody say a message. The gospel of salvation is the revelation. Listen carefully. The gospel of salvation is the revelation of the Father's love. A revelation of the Father's love. Are we together? Manifested in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And the object of that sacrifice is man first and then creation. The death of Jesus does not only affect men, it affects creation. Are we together? So the revelation of the Father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the Son, Jesus, to man first and then creation. And then man's response, everybody say response. Man's response to that gospel who had believed our report to that man the arm of the lord had been revealed are we together yes so when i hear the gospel what is the gospel for god so loved the world that he gave he proved his love for man by allowing jesus his son to come to the earth now watch this the assignment of jesus on earth was not to die death was simply a gateway to help him fulfill that assignment are we together jesus came to earth to fulfill a threefold assignment number one jesus came as a representation the image of the invisible god until jesus came they did not know god so they would they would accredit or credit both the things that were done by the devil fallen angels and god to the god of the hebrews until jesus came there was no bodily representation of the god of the heavens so jesus came as the image of the christ made manifest are we together the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as the glory of the father full of grace and truth and the bible calls him the image of the invisible god the invisible god that hitherto we only heard about and a few people had certain encounters of different dimensions of him that God is now personified in the Christ so you can look at Jesus to know who God is Jesus came as the will the thoughts of God the word word of God is the word logos the thoughts the intent of a man seeking out for expression are we following tonight this is basic salvation that is not basic at all it is the strengthener of your christian faith you have to know how you came into this life so jesus came to reveal to men the image of the invisible god as a commitment and a desire to help men know god number two jesus came as an agent of reconciliation the bible calls him the mediator of the new covenant what does that mean the bridge like two aggrieved parties the word mediator is a legal term 
it's a system of reconciliation that means two aggrieved parties or at least an aggrieved party that has broken relationship and fellowship so jesus came as the bridge but in order to fulfill that ministry as savior and mediator he needed to pass through the legal system of the spirit and there are ordinances that have been in the realm of the spirit that he had to subscribe to ordinance number one the soul that seen it it shall die it's a law that any soul that sins the penalty is death are we together yes ordinance number two without the shedding of blood i'm doing a quick review so that we'll just pass this area without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins no atonement no remission are we together so jesus needed to satisfy that legal term number three that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone so only death leads to resurrection anything that is alive in itself cannot resurrect it will have to die and then resurrect with another life are we together now so jesus being the mediator watch this number one he came as a manifestation of the image of the invisible god number two he came as the mediator of the new covenant to fulfill that ministry of reconciliation drawing men connecting men to god and he needed to route it through abraham and by so doing fulfill the legal claims of justice the third reason why jesus came was to perform his high priestly ministry you have to understand this that he is a priest after the order of melchizedek that even in resurrection he had to take his blood the blood of the eternal sacrifice and he went before the tabernacle in heaven that was adumbrated by that that was on earth and he poured his blood upon that tabernacle so that once and for all salvation became real to men are we together yes so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus to the end that when you hear that gospel and believe that it is true that jesus has satisfied the legal claims of justice that now standing before the throne you stand guiltless with the righteousness that is equal to that of the christ are we together not like that of the christ when you receive that report the bible says immediately two things happen to you number one the first thing that happens to you when you declare jesus as savior and lord is that there is a translation spiritually speaking from the domain the kingdom of darkness that means a domain that is under the legal authorization of satan into the kingdom of his dear son now follow me very carefully are we together and then the bible says that when there is that translation the second thing that happens and all these things happen concurrently is that by believing it is credited to you for righteousness like faithful abraham i hope you know the first person to hear the gospel was abraham our father the gospel was preached to abraham in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed abraham believed god and it was credited to him and that formula of abraham is what was given to the saints to hear the report of the lord and to believe by faith then it is credited to us as righteousness people like kenyon define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of condemnation and without a sense of inferiority this is what he calls righteousness i will want to add that more than that righteousness is the manifestation of the nature of the christ in a man it's more than just an act the manifestation of the nature of christ in a man is called righteousness righteousness is first who you are by reason of your believing the report of the lord now number three 
we are given the Holy Spirit according to Galatians chapter 3 Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord the Bible says being made a cause for us for it is written in the law of Moses that cost is every man that hangs upon the tree why that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles what is the blessing of Abraham I've taught it here justification by faith the blessing of Abraham is not a pronouncement no there are blessings of Abraham there is the blessing and there is the blessing of Abraham three of them are not the same the blessing of Abraham is the justification that comes by faith the blessings of Abraham are the speakings that came upon Abraham as an inheritance by God that we can route through the promise the blessing is the Holy Spirit are we together so the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham justification by faith might come upon the Gentiles to give us now access to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith so we receive the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the representation of the life of God he is the one we call Zoe now listen very carefully the word eternal life is not something the Holy Spirit brings it is his presence in us the Holy Spirit does not bring eternal life the Holy Spirit is the life of God he is what we call Zoe he is what we call the blessing are we together now watch this this man let me come back to our, our terms now as we used this man has been convicted of the Holy Spirit and a preacher makes what we know to be an altar call this gentleman comes out receives the life of God acknowledges Christ as his Savior and Lord and according to the authority of Scripture the Bible says this man is saved because he believed in his heart unto righteousness and he confessed with his mouth the Lordship of Christ step one everybody says step one this is not the end of the journey he has now entered into the kingdom he has had one key the key to the kingdom Jesus Christ now that he's in the kingdom watch this this man can remain unfruitful forever right now in the kingdom he's no longer a natural man but he's also not a spiritual man the Bible calls them carnal men the word carnal means sensual they have not grown to the level now where their impulses are aligned to the word and the spirit he's not a natural man but he's not yet a spiritual man in experience are we together now many believers can remain at this level forever and be in church for 10 years and in honor to your longevity in church you can be called a deacon from a deacon you move to a pastor and then to whatever now humanly speaking you are making advancement but spiritually speaking you are still here are we together now watch this it is for this man that Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 was given that he gave unto some apostles listen now the fourfold or fivefold as we call it is about to be introduced now he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers why to do the work of the ministry I mean for the perfecting or the equipping the maturing it is called of the saints so that this man now matured will do the work of the ministry are we together so the Holy Spirit is the next person to be introduced to this man because the Word of God without the ministry of the Holy Spirit will turn this man to a religious man he will receive the knowledge that puffs up ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth the Bible says for from such depart are you following me tonight so this gentleman gets born again the the sequence of spiritual growth is that for his health look up please for this man's health and his speed in growth it is important to be planted within a community of believers because being planted within the community of believers now will afford him the opportunity to be discipled an interesting word i'm introducing now say discipleship please shout it say discipleship it's a word that has been abused by religious 
um, religious perceptions most of what we call discipleship in the body of Christ is conformity to the doctrines and the patterns of a denomination but God's idea of discipleship is not conformity just to the patterns and the doctrines of a denomination or conformity to the central thought agreed upon by a body of religious people that's what most times we call discipleship is the reason why after many years of mentorship the people don't look like Christ they look like the error are you getting what I'm saying now yes the Bible says looking up to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith he started it he should end it so this gentleman is planted in a ministry like koinonia are we together now he has an assignment his assignment is to remain open and to know that now he must grow that growth is a possibility in the kingdom luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men this guy is saved but he needs to grow if he does not grow then galatians chapter 4 becomes his tragedy are we together he says this i say then an heir for as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave although he be lord of all but that he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed so an heir provided he remains a child bankrupt of the knowledge that provides growth that he does not differ from a slave this gentleman's next part of call is to grow everybody say growth the growth is threefold number one the first dimension of growth for this gentleman is to be brought to a point where the foundational pillars the foundational pillars of the christian faith are taught him i'm showing you how this person will become a powerful man tomorrow the foundational pillars the bible begins to tell us in in hebrews chapter 6 that leaving these basic doctrines let us move further to more superior things paraphrasing and he said the doctrine of baptism and of this and of that and of that there are basic foundational pillars of the christian faith please look up if this guy receives the best of mentorship he should be introduced number one to the value of the word of god in the life of the believer this is key it's not something he should learn later he should learn that in this kingdom the boundaries of god's commitment to us is scripture he must learn that the primary way of knowing god is scripture all scripture were inspired by the holy ghost profitable for reproof for doctrine for correction that the man of god may be mature fruitful in every good work are we together so this man must be brought to a point where he understands the value of the word of god number two this man must be brought to a point where he understands the foundational value of the priesthood ministry of the believer the priesthood ministry is not something he should learn when he's ordained into ministry by priesthood he should be able to understand the power of prayer as a system that transforms you and as a system that helps you to legislate in this kingdom when this man is not taught prayer early it will affect him are you seeing the sequence of growth number three this man must be taught the value of corporate fellowship and community life as a system for preserving kingdom values i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity are we together it is like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron down to his bed to his skirt his garment he said there the lord had commanded the blessing this man must be introduced to the foundation of corporate fellowship number four this man must be introduced to an understanding 
of his identity in Christ. It matters for this man to know who he has now become in Christ. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There are many things that the Bible calls the believer. For instance, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It's a name he must know. Number two, the Bible tells us that we have been raised up together with Christ. Are we together? He must understand that fact. Number three, he must know now that he has become a partaker of the Spirit. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father, that this man has access to God. According to Hebrews, he says, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and help in time of need. This man must know he has access to the wisdom of the spirit now he has access to fellowship he should understand this as a foundational pillar of his spiritual growth he must see the necessity of the fivefold ministry in his life as gifts given to the body to help mature him the next thing is this man must understand that he has a purpose and a destiny in Christ it's a foundational understanding it's not something he should have when he graduates from school or gets married no the Bible talks about believers being predestined according to his eternal counsel he must know that he was born for a reason Are we together when this gentleman you are, this guy is stooping down to respect me his back will pain him oh stand, stand straight eh? he respects me and he's leaning like this god bless you for your honor that's how the world will bow before you eh? now watch this but you can you can stand you have you have tried let's 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 be fair on the gentleman praise the lord now do you know that when this guy now understands these things they are very strong pillars now he can begin to move to the deeper matters of the kingdom are we together what we call the mysteries of the kingdom he will now begin to understand the methodologies the ways of god he now begins to understand the keys of the kingdom he now begins to understand the mysteries that connect to the results that he desires already remember that the foundation of his life is god remember that he knows who he is in christ because this man is about to go through challenges somewhere in his life and if he's not told who he is in christ and the value and the power of prayer and he does not have a system of mentorship that will tell him he's all right this guy will be discouraged soon when you get born again there's usually a bonus for you whether you pray or not things just work you are jumping is to motivate you are we together and you look at believers laboring and you are like ah, you mean this thing is this simple it's an encouragement so that whatever comes your way you will know your life is in his hands yes do you know that this gentleman having completed this realm will now move to the next realm where he's mentored on the ways of god now i begin to teach this guy on the principles of the kingdom here is where we begin to show him mysteries in the kingdom that there is a mystery that connects longevity there is a mystery that connects exemption how favor works how giving works how the relationship with the holy spirit is built how the anointing grows the necessity for this this guy continues to learn and learn them again while he grows now this content is graduating this guy from a carnal man to become a spiritual man with proper mentorship he will get to a point where he becomes strong and mature his convictions are strong he's not only believing because a pastor said 
a prophet said, an apostle said, he has come into an, a, a conviction about God. Watch this. When he gets to this level, the next assignment is for him to now be taught the principles that make him a battle axe. Thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war. That you are not only in the spirit to grow alone. Are we together now? That it's time for you to mature and now become useful. This is where you need to now understand the principles of kingdom advance. What it means to become an ambassador. What it means to be mightily used by God. It is at this point this man begins to learn the laws of influence. This man begins to understand the deeper dynamics of the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, this is how he started. As a naive, confused Christian, not knowing his left from his right. And with a few months and a few years of proper discipleship, look what he has become. A mighty battle axe. Now, look at this. Why are many believers in church for many years? The average church has two to three services per week. And after many years, the believer is still here. Fighting for appointment. Fighting for deaconry. Fighting for eldership fighting for this and that and that and that and that and sometimes the pressure and politics of ministry will make the person to be ordained here as a pastor are we together now a baby about to lead babies he does not know anything about the things of god members say we don't like you and he says i'm not doing ministry again why because he's a baby he's broke and he fetches from church offering and says I will return it later he's a baby he has not seen the value and the excellence of service this guy is persecuted and he says God why me these are the languages of babes he says strong me that for them who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses unto godliness if I turn to God today and say why me it's, it's an embarrassment um is, is, is an embarrassment to his investment in my life not at this level the difference between this man and this woman is that at this level you should have gained mastery the things of the kingdom you should not be learning how to walk at this level when you see someone who is you don't put babies on wheelchair but if an adult cannot walk, you put him on wheelchair. Nobody puts a baby on wheelchair and says, I said you should walk and you are not walking. Nobody prays for a baby for a miracle and says, rise up and walk. It is, it is allowed in that realm. But when you become an adult and you cannot walk, it's an attack. Listen, there are, when people say they are matured as believers, ask them, what makes you think you are mature? Say, I'm not a baby Christian at all. I'm not. Why? What makes you believe? Say, I've suffered in this life. No, that's not the reason why you are, you are a mature Christian. Not at all. It is true that the fullness, don't get me wrong, please understand this. It is true that the fullness of affliction can refine. But suffering is not the reason why you are a mature Christian. You may be suffering as a result of ignorant attack that you don't have the knowledge for. This person should be able to help this person in a heartbeat. This person should be equipped with such spiritual knowledge. Listen, if I come and say, Pastor, I'm in trouble. Like an encyclopedia should just open. Which mystery is allocated to solve this man's problem? This is the justification for being spiritual. When you talk to this person and say, um, You know the way life is. You are supposed to be here, not here. This person should have at this point had a covenant with God or be connected to strong covenants that even where his or her personal faith fails, there should still be a way of routing results. Otherwise, who brought you here? Who qualified you here? Are you seeing that a lot of baby Christians 
continue to say they are much at this realm people can start falling in your meetings you don't need to get here right here in fact before you understand one impartation and you will use falling down and say watch Benihin is throwing people me too I'm throwing people we are the same whoever told you please understand what I'm teaching you this is a refresher series that many believers do not understand so the Bible says I will give you pastors after my heart men of God hear me you have an assignment to build people sequentially you must know what they are to become not hope that you are doing the right thing like an architect when an architect is building he does not sit down hoping that I hope the building is coming well he has the master plan already he's only hoping that you get to a point where you are able to understand at this level there is something you can tell God that will make God act in a certain way to this man that he does not yet have it is one Lord reach unto all but my brothers and my sisters something you have done a process of growth has brought you to this point There is a level of relationship and intimacy you have with God. You cannot fear their fears. No. You cannot. If me and this guy pray, he's going to be frustrated. We can pray a general church prayer. But if he comes to the secret place to pray with me, this guy is going to be tired. He's going to pray from his realm. And he will hear me talk to God in a way that does not make sense. It may not even sound scriptural, but it is. There is a level, I will call God names he has not had anywhere. It's a name that my experience gave God. He can come to the secret place and see me sitting quietly on the ground like a herbalist. And say, sir, let's pray. I said, that's what I'm doing. And he said, I, I thought prayer is just when you are talking and rolling. And I say, yes. Just do what you are taught. You are correct. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul sing it one more time yeah. only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul listen don't worry you can stand back this is already a refresher course many of us are born again but I tell you why our lives are unfruitful I can watch you pray for one hour and tell you at least 10 things you have done wrong as serious as you are praying I will tell you the part that will be answered and the part that will not be answered I will tell you what was unnecessary in the content of your prayer now at this point God will not show you because the goal is not the accuracy of your prayer but the zeal of your prayer so he will allow the error just pass there's no need for accuracy he's cultivating zeal you can pray and make mistakes the goal is that you become prayerful the realm of accuracy is waiting for you in the future so you will find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense but the more you pray the more God is backing it. The idea, it is easier to edit your prayer life when you have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. When you are corrected here, you will be discouraged. When you get here, you will find out that many things you prayed for were already answered in your growth. You were never supposed to pray for them. Growth already answered that prayer request. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul, satisfy my soul. Please sit down, sit down. 
there are many people parading themselves as matured Christians. You say, why? You say, I've been born again for 10 years. What does that mean? What does that mean? It is true that longevity, if well utilized, that's time. And if you invested in it spiritually, the Bible says that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. But he that sows to the flesh will reap corruption. You can sow to the flesh for many years. It does not mean you reap life. Are we together? This thing I told you is the basic foundation of any believer's Christian life. If you do not know this, you will leave God eventually. Something about the absence. Now imagine that, where, where are you come? Imagine that this guy just got born again. And the next thing he's hearing is a teaching on influence or a teaching on prosperity. This guy is going to fail woefully. Do you know why? Because it is dangerous to be taught prosperity as a carnal man. The flesh will not allow the purity of that message to bless you. The message will fall on lust that is already there. And it will make this guy a dangerously materialistic person. So there is a sequence of growth. Not every topic is relevant to every believer. Imagine that this guy gets born again and his first message is love. And, and life partner and relationship. Do you know what is going to happen to this guy? He's already dead. Even before the series on relationship is over. Because I can tell you, this guy's prayer life is not going anywhere. This guy's life is not going anywhere. The awareness that there is a beautiful lady to see and marry would not... You think he will pray the way you are praying? That you are praying like a madman, not when you are aware a lady is looking at you. No! Ah, what if I... I, I miss the moment and the flesh is there deceiving you and you are failing programming woeful failure but if this guy is taught that the beginning of his life is God he can be praying like a madman any lady that does not like that demonstration does not like a profitable destiny yes sir There are people today who cannot pray in tongues because they were taught something before tongues. And what they were taught corrupted their passion, that reckless abandonment. Let me tell you, those days when we started ministry here, you would see the ladies, including hot CC ladies, when it's time to pray, they will roll under the anointing from one point to the other. They will stand up with the whole the whole paraphernalia run pulled to pieces. It matters how we are taught. It matters who, who defines your spiritual value. Who cultivates your hunger and your appetite for the things of God. The keys of the kingdom. Now, I said that because it was important to lay this foundation. But in this refresher series, my, my goal is really not to touch on these basics. Now, I want to refresh and show us again. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, it's this week and next week. I'm praying that what you did not see before, may you see it now. How do I know I have caught light? The results. The results show that the light has come. If the results cannot show with time, then the light never came. How do I know? How can I trust the content of the information I have? One of the greatest um, concerns and prayer in my life is not to believe a lie. That I should not believe something I hold true. And find out after many years that I've been wasting my time believing in a lie. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness. There are things people have believed about prosperity that is punishing them today. Because the content was wrong. There are things people believe about church and ministry and ministry growth today. That is making them languish in failure in spite of the fact that they are anointed. 
there is a, an exact body of knowledge allocated for the truths that you desire and i'm going to run through them this week and next week can you lay hands on your head and command that in the name of jesus your understanding is fruitful lift your voice and pray please pray speak to my mind be open hallelujah now matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 let's go back please and let's deal with these issues now sincerely is my prayer in the name of jesus christ that will hold these keys and will rise in a way and manner the mysteries of the kingdom demystify life they bring you to a point where you see that life is not as complicated as it looks and i will give you the keys of the kingdom say i receive it and whatsoever you bind the word bind there should not confuse you declare to be improper a particular version says disallow and then it talks about allowing now watch this notice the sequence according to amplify that it is what has been bound in heaven you replicate it in the earth and what has been allowed in heaven you replicate it so the keys are keys that allow you to replicate heaven remember the sequence is that it be done in the earth as it is in heaven it is not going to be done in heaven as it is done in the earth so realities are first finished in the heavenlies and then they are replicated in the earth the keys of the kingdom still amplified psalm 82 let's start from verse 5 still amplified very powerful rendition it says they know not amplified amplified keep amplified there please it says the magistrate and the judges know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness of complacent satisfaction and all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking six i said you are god since you judge on my behalf as my representatives indeed all of you are children of the most high verse seven let's shout it together one to go but you shall die as men and fall as one of the princes so the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge specific knowledge that gives us enlightenment and authority access to spiritual truth access to information illumination these are the keys that make for dominion so the bible says there are things that have been permitted to walk in the heavenlies and there are things that are not permitted to walk in the heavenlies when you obtain the keys of the kingdom in terms of spiritual knowledge and information they are the keys that activate and deactivate possibilities in the earth realm these are the keys of the kingdom of heaven please understand i'm teaching now they are the keys that activate there are possibilities but they must be activated through knowledge and there are possibilities that can be deactivated for instance premature death is a possibility it can be deactivated like you detonate a bomb are we together long life is a possibility but it's activated delay is a possibility activated speed is a possibility activated mediocrity these are all possibilities in the earth realm and so he says i give you keys 
that means I give you access to I I will bring a file and run through all the possibilities available to mankind choose the ones to activate and set them ablaze in your life and deactivate all the ones you will find some already activated the average believer when he comes into Christ when you are born either by territory or culture or ordinances there are possibilities already activated for you they were activated through covenants they were activated through yokes your assignment is to know the keys of the kingdom like a pilot sitting and say no I off this I off this delaying destiny I off this mediocrity I off this I put on the switch of speed I put on the switch of the anointing why am I a pastor with no members I deactivated he said I give you the keys of the kingdom please listen very carefully please sit down you will find the possibility of poverty activated and tied there many families to remain so but you come through knowledge and you find out that this is not a possibility in the economy of God and you are shown the key to bring it down and suddenly your life changes and they say are you not someone who is associated with this territory you say no more the keys and I will give you the keys of the kingdom listen the Bible says speaking to Abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes and see that means from where you are you can go anywhere but there is a key that takes you there you don't need to go somewhere else from where you are your location your territory notwithstanding you can rise from there please pay attention because what I show you will disarm principalities and powers what I show you will tame life and you will play life like a chess. People will only look forward to your downfall as a prophecy that has failed already. You are, you are standing with stability. You are not afraid of your results. They came by light. Let me tell you this. Any dimension you step into, not by understanding, you will be afraid of the results because the boundaries of the spiritual knowledge that should give you confidence and stability is not there a car comes to you and you are afraid what if it spoils will another one come but there is a body of knowledge that when you know it gives you stability if god says give the car you will give it number one out of faith but number two out of understanding of not just god alone the economy of the system has been open to you The major assignment of a believer is growth. The major assignment of a believer is enlightenment. Being brought through the power of light to a spiritual dimension where ignorance fades away. Not boastfulness, not arrogance, but you come to a place of stability. I know whom I have believed. Ah. And I am persuaded. See, there are things when you tell me today, it is going to be stupid for me to be worried about. No. Like the future of the ministry, like what makes you believe that in the next five to ten years, the ministry will be standing strong. You see, Fear truly comes because of ignorance. There are things I've found in my life like gems. And I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, dear ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the spirit that enlightens, brings light, may that grace open you up to light. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, See, let me tell you when you talk there will be mockers there will be foolish men who think you are a talkative until you see the unlimited power these are keys they are not suggestions they are keys they are backed up by God's integrity they are not backed up by a professor 
a governor, a president, a monarch. This is God we are talking about here. Please sit down. I feel sad and respectfully speaking, I submit to you that I feel sorry for any man in our generation today who ignores access to this body of light. He has only signed himself and his generation to a life of pain and tragedy. I don't care who and I don't care what arrogance is back of that ignorance. There are truths when you ignore it's a generation that pays for it. It's not an individual. Listen, you are hearing the things that you are hearing. Blessed are your ears, Revelation says, for they hear these things. The truths that you are hearing are a word that is coming to Jacob and is coming for the sake of Israel. When God wants to visit Israel, he finds Jacob and sends a word to Jacob and it lightens upon Israel. That will show me the path of light for in your light we see light who can claim to see when God has not shown you light what are you seeing Job 29 and verse 3 Job 29 and verse 3 Please let's hurry up. Let's walk together, media. Job 29 and verse 3. Job is speaking now. When his candle did what? Shined upon where? My head. Not upon my feet. The first assignment of the light of God is not your feet. It's to shine upon your head. To take away that darkness. That vagueness. That assumption. It may be an age-old age old assumption, but it's still an assumption. A popular assumption is still an assumption. And then he says, and by his light, I walk through darkness. That a man can find his way out of light. And you find your way and stand in a position where your life becomes a living wonder. Not that you walk miracles, you are one yourself. A living miracle your life is a message whether you are preaching or not this is what God is making you become and listen to me you don't become it just by wish you are exposed to an organized body of spiritual knowledge understand my choice of words not every spiritual information makes men there must be an organized body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the various dimensions of God that you want to see manifest in your life when you learn this let me see the power let me see the course let me see the yoke let me see the enchantment let me see the divination let me see the scourging tongues of men and the ill wishes of men that sustains the power to keep you down it no longer exists you will know how cheap darkness is when you stand from a point of spiritual illumination it is true that when the light shines in darkness truly the darkness does not comprehend it where we are right now we have to admit is a product of an inaccurate understanding of the body of knowledge allocated for the results we desire please hear me I'm careful to say this thing because sometimes it looks like pride you hear people prophesy, I did this, I did this, and favor came. And for me, it's not the testimony. Do you know what you did? And can you do it again? Any result that cannot be reproduced is not a real result. You can stumble into results. But sustainable results that dumbfound the pride of this arrogant age must come by knowledge. Apostle, you don't understand my situation, that's why. If you were my shoes, no, sir. I respect your pain, but I admit to you, your pain is proof of the dominion of darkness. Let light come, and you will watch what happens. 
because every desire that we have there is an allocation an allocation of it based on the word of god and if it is not captured in my life i must admit that there is something i do not know the earlier you admit that there's something you did not know the better for you quickly don't wait till you fail for a long time the moment you start failing stop 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 immediately and say i'm not continuing until i'm sure of what i'm doing that way you will redeem time many people fail for many years they are humbled by life before they have to come back and say okay i didn't get it let me get it now you will thank me for the truths that i share with you you will thank me for the truths that i show you hallelujah now let's explore some keys of the kingdom number one there's part one and there's part two the first key is found in genesis chapter one verse one everybody read the first four words please shout it as loud as you can first four words one two read one more time one more time one more time last time now this is the first law when God does not begin a thing it has failed in the beginning of anything is not knowledge in the beginning of anything is not skill in the beginning of anything is not connection in the beginning of anything is God I am Alpha Omega don't call me to join something you started if I do not begin it my commitment is not there I show you a powerful secret in the beginning of your business God in the beginning of your marriage God in the beginning of your exploits in the beginning of ministry this is a secret that has changed my life anything God does not start he will not back he has to start it as Alpha because when he starts it you will use his methods you will not use your method and call on him to back it later our proud world today thinks God is only useful for spiritual life when they want to do business they take God out when they want to do ministry they take God out love and relationship they take God out everything they take God out but I show you the first four words keep it there please media this is the first spiritual law that I want to show you tonight in the beginning of my life God in the beginning of my ministry not passion not desire not assignment consciousness God now the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see I don't see myself, I don't see my achievements. At the center of it all is you that I see. Is you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Please sit down. In the beginning of my marriage, or my desire to marry, beauty, you are joking, you will pay for it. The beginning of my desire to marry a macho, handsome guy with a job with NMPC, you will pay for it eventually. In the beginning of my business, intelligence and a well-accredited mentorship, you have are, you are failed already. The first secret to excelling in life is for God to not be a participant, but the alpha of all that you do. 
Don't call God to participate in an idea that you finish with yourself. You organized it. You chose your life partner. You chose how many children you will give birth to and you say, God, come and bless it. No, God does not work like that. You started your business. You chose your location by yourself. You even bought the first consignment. As soon as it arrived, Nigeria said, Lord, here it is. It's yours. It's not his own. You started your ministry, decided where the church will start. You already ordained pastors. You called members. You called everybody and you said, Lord, behold your, 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 your assembly. No, sir. The great know the secret to lifting. They don't move. Moses said, do not send us away from here. We cannot start this journey if your presence will not go with us. We are wasting our time. It didn't say if our weapons don't go with us. It didn't say if our gold, a man that had gold, had weapons. Yet he's saying these things are mundane. God, if you will not go with me, please don't send me. How shall they know that we're people that are separated? And God says, you got it. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. The Bible says, for with God, all things, for with God. Not for when you are moving and you say, okay, God, why are you leaving me? Oh, yeah, now come and hurry up and join. And then you say, God, come. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Lord, where are you? If you will not lead, I'm not going. I'm not going. Lord, if you will not lead me in ministry, I'm not going. Is it not written in your Bible that if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want? No. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He said, I am the vine. Don't be confused. We are together, but you are the branches. You are not the vine. I am the vine. You are connected to me, but you are the branch. He distributes it very clearly. Our dominion is shared dominion. Not dominion that is derived by our own strength. It's a secret that I've worked with in my life. My brothers and my sisters, I have no business going where God is not going. It is not my concern at all. The pressures of life will push you to many things things and places where God is not. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What looks cheap now will be costly when you start paying for it. When we're about to start this ministry, haven't done everything by the Spirit. Three days before Koinonia would start, we had done crusades, we had been in ministry for a while. But before Koinonia would start, I still went back for a retreat. God, please, one more time. Are you the one speaking? And are you still leading? I tell you the truth. If God said no, that would be the end of it. He must lead the way. When he leads the way, you will follow. Now, thanks be to God who causes us. Like a blind man. How many of you have seen a blind man walking accurately? It's not because he can see. He's following a man who can see. And the man will lead him. Many people do not know this dimension of God. We start things by emotion. And then we ask God to join when things begin to backfire. And God says, no, 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 no. You're on your own. Start with God in your life. And watch your life turn into a sign and a wonder. No matter how bad it looks, if God says, I am there, go. 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 I remember years ago, the things that we now walk in, God said so. And I said, Lord, if you lead, we are going home. And look what God has done. And look what he continues to do. In the beginning, God. Please, return to the place of prioritizing God. Don't use God. Let him lead the way. Many of us only say yes to God if we said yes to it already. You just say, God, just help me confirm. No, you must be flexible. Lord, is this ministry your will? I've been in it for 10 years, but talk to me now. If it is not you, I'm closing it this night. Many of us, our ego will not allow us to be that obedient. 
is God speaking to us? In the beginning, God. Let God start your life. So whatever happens, you can say, God, please, I'm here. If God directs you and grants you approval and you get married to a wife and that lady becomes barren, two years, three years, you have a legal right to go to God with your wife. Stand with God and say, Lord, you are the one that joined us all. We came to you. You gave us the right to choose, but we returned it to you. And we say we don't trust ourselves. Guide our decision. And you guided us. Now the devil is bringing barrenness. You put pressure on his integrity. And he will have to arise. If you call me and you are around maybe a bank somewhere and you say you don't have money and I say pick the bike and come and meet me. You told me already you don't have money but I said you should come. By the time you come and you cannot pay the bike, who will pay for it? I ask you to come. I must take responsibility for your obedience. You will always be afraid to go to God when he did not start with you. What will you go and tell God now? Of course, his mercy is there. But you cannot stand now and say, Oh God, this wife you gave me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You were at the beer parlor. Under the heavy... And, and then on that day, you drank unusually. And it's from the standpoint of that drunkenness, you made a destiny decision. And now you have to pay for it. Of course, God is a merciful God and he can restore. But the truth is, before the restoration comes, you'll be paying for it until the word of the Lord came. The word tried him. Look at me, please. Don't be too big to allow God to start. Don't feel my ego is there. I'm too intelligent. Let church not, not make me a dull person. I'm intelligent. I went to school. Not destiny. Not destiny. You must learn to step back and say, Oh God of heaven, I declare before you sincerely, there is nothing that I know moves God like a broken and a contrite heart. Let God find a man who is genuinely broken and contrite. He will veto whatever is wrong and come. A broken heart is a real invitation for his presence. Are we together? Let me give us one more. Ah, there are keys, so oh. the keys are many. You hold them and hang them like a chain, a chain of royalty, a royal diadem, and you move through life. You stand by this door, you remove one key, you open it. There are doors you don't just open, you break the door so that others can pass too. Because you can pass and the door will be locked. He has broken the gates of brass. Not opened it, broken it. And cut the bars of iron in sunder. So that others can pass. Will I pass a door and my child will not pass? Number two. Are, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Please use this. Please use this. God told me something years ago and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. In other words, if like John, you agree to decrease. John said in John chapter 3 and verse 31, he says that I may decrease so that you may increase. And I, if I be lifted up, not you, if you are lifted up, you will fall. But if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. When they bow down to Jesus, they also bow down to the donkey that was carrying him. When they put the leaves on the ground for Jesus to walk, his feet never touched the palm. But it was the donkey that carried him. Who told you when you carry Jesus, you fail? It's an honor. To let the world see him. 
is something I've learned in ministry is something I've learned in my life sincerely my desire I tell you is not for fame it's not for power it's not for money I desire from the depth of my heart to represent the face of God to a generation to show a generation that it pays to lift the name of the Lord it pays to be passionate over the things of God in a man's lifetime and I remember when God showed me a vision and I saw a generation of men I was standing somewhere no food no water they were crying that whole generation and I came to them I said why they said you are the reason and I was afraid to go because a few people were looking for me and I made up my mind that I will go if I perish I perish as soon as I stepped out I saw a giant man and he held my hands he said let's go for you to be lifted all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all I want is for for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. When God begins your life, the passion for fame dies, I tell you. The passion to prove a point, the celebrity obsession dies at once. I want to be known so that I prove to other people I'm not a failure is totally unnecessary. Provided in your journey is enough evidence of the hand of God. I tell you why God does not use many people. It's not because they don't pray. It's not because they don't fast. It's not because they are not holy. Because the corruption in their heart, the dimension of obsession for fame, and the, some of you, as you are looking at me like this, if, if a drop of anointing comes on your destiny, God will not hear you again everybody must bow down to you everybody must kneel down and lie down to greet you and you will keep the person there for everybody to see before you say now you can stand up my my dear son all this pride that continues to kill men i tell you why many people do not rise there are some of us we have it hidden some of us are boastful and outspoken about it others are quiet but it's still there waiting for something to bring it out that 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 appetite to outshine is a loss that needs to crumble at his presence in the beginning god and at the end of it god if nobody ever sees me today and all they see is god and his mighty works sincerely i stand before the god of heaven and i tell you i am satisfied i am the things that you see and hear God doing through my life and this ministry, I stand and I bless him for it. But let me tell you this. You ask God, he will tell you. I have no business trying to search for fame, apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God. Thank God for all of those things. But my brothers and my sisters, I'm wise enough to know that without him, I can do nothing. Get to that point in your life where everything about God is your obsession. Don't use God to get fame. Listen, let me tell you, many people leave God to try to get money and you find out how much have you gotten? How much? You have just gotten trouble all around. When God swears over you, to lift you let any obstacle clear that way because even if you are a believer it will crush you when God vows upon a man listen if you can make this vow this night and say Lord I give up this search for to be known now sometimes it's not demonic it's because of our background we came from backgrounds where and some of us our cultures you derive respect from the money the Jeep the car, the house, the moment that is there, they say, ah, you are a real man. 
thank God for culture but please be born again please be born again don't just be saved be born again subscribe to another culture let me tell you this when you hide behind the cross that is the way the whole world sees you the secret to your being seen is his being seen when they see Jesus they have to see you my life is a testimony my brothers and my sisters share what I teach you and be wise and rise from this mediocrity in life it does not start with just intellect there is a place for all these things but don't forget these first four words that start your Bible in the beginning God not in the middle then God comes uh -uh. in the beginning God this is how I run my life it is God who everything I have belongs to him you never hear me say you only hear me say my thing just in terms of responsibility but God knows if he started the beginning then anything I find there is his own before I came my house is his own my cars his own the influence his own the fame his own the anointing his own I'm only a steward and I remain a steward forever and the Bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful I show you why only few people ever rise in a generation it's not Rema it's not miracles you can walk every miracle you know and be shocked that your influence never grows you can have every revelation you have and move in dimensions of power never seen and be shocked that people receive your miracles and still despise you. Let all the other name fade away. Let that be your prayer. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you and every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. And every other name fade away. Let's sit down. Let's start the second. The second is almost a master key, except that it submits to God too. The second is almost a master key. Listen, listen. What I'm about to share with you now will take away worry from your life. This worry about what to eat. This worry about what to wear. This worry about how you will become famous. It will fade completely and live your life. This is a revision series. You may not have gotten it the last time, but please get it now. Success is not pursued. Success is not pursued. Success is not what you look for. You will never find it. Success was designed to come just like fate. Just like fate, comet. You don't pursue faith. Uh -uh. You don't pursue success. Please hear me. Success is what is attracted to you by reason of who you are becoming. Not what you are doing. Who you are becoming. Please understand this spiritual law and stop wasting your time looking for mundane things that will never come. Success is not what you pursue. Seeking success is a cause. Spending your life looking for it is a cause. Are we together? Now, please look up. Let me teach. Um, come, gentlemen. Let me have six or eight gentlemen. Sit down, Pastor Alphonse. Sit down. Please come. Sit down. You come quickly so that we we'll save time. Just stand this way. 
stand facing me space yourselves thank you thank you and you stand um, my friend you stand here watch this everybody thank you now please watch this call all of these people the needs of men say the needs of men one more time please shout it say the needs of men call sam is looking sharp call this financial prosperity you are all looking sharp eh? my dear people you are all looking sharp now watch this call this financial prosperity that's what you are looking for are we together call this marital peace oh how we need it marital peace are we together call this influence and fame we need it too social media world we need it a lot likes and follows call this speed are we together call this what do you call this favor ah koinonia favor favor and then call this impact now watch this this is me help me starting out my life with zero possibilities zero possibilities now watch this did you know how frustrating it will be for me ladies and gentlemen to start pursuing these things one by one these six only represent the uncountable needs that represent success to men and we think that the way to become successful is to isolate these things one by one and begin to seek them that burden is too much an intelligent god will not design success that way are we together now so when you pursue success it means if you are to spend 120 years on earth you spend 30 years seeking no money is even a lifetime you spend 30 years seeking a wife or a husband another how many years seeking all of these things your lifetime together will not allow you get them this is the cause of the fallen man to seek things one by one jesus rebuked people again and again for seeking things he says the gentiles run after these things they run after they run after but your heavenly father knows that ye have need of it now watch this this is how god designed the kingdom i pray for you that you will get this once and for all now watch this at this level notice my prayer I'm a prayer warrior. Oh God, open the windows of heaven. Finances, give me finance. Oh God, a good wife, good children. I will never give birth to an armed robber. I won't give birth to a thief. At this level, your prayer is valid. Because there are many things you do not know. Father, grant me favor in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant me fame. Grant me speed. And I'm praying. And sometimes I'm tempted to leave God to quickly get them. Now watch this. All these guys represent levels. Everybody say levels. They represent dimensions. Say dimensions. For every level I get to, designed by God, are the possibilities already allocated to gravitate towards my growth at that level. So human beings are inversions. Are we together now? There is a version of me that cannot be a millionaire. No. It is God's law that will stop that version from being a millionaire. It's not an attack. If I pray to be a millionaire, God will answer me by providing the growth that takes me to the realm where that possibility was allocated. Please understand what I'm teaching you. Now, the challenge with believers is that we stay where we are and we try to use prayer to, what are you called? Impacts. Now, I'm here oh, full of ignorance and pride. And yet, I want to make Benny Hinn's impact. And I borrow the impact for two weeks like a rubber ring. What happens? It will leave me again. Anything that does not come to you because of your growth must leave you. It will leave as losses it will live as armed robbers it will live as thieves forget about the actors there is a law that compels that any level that you any object you get that does not resonate with your growth must leave you it's a law 
I show you the loss of the kingdom. I show you the way we grow. Now watch this. These guys are standing here. Now gentlemen, this is what I want you to do. For every step I take forward, you to take a step forward. Are, are we together? Now watch this. I am here and I was invited to come for koinonia. A broke, confused, wearing my smelly cloth. All I know is God. And I have the, the opportunity to sit under a heavy anointing and mentorship. And now I am taught certain things. Watch this. As the word of God is shining upon my mind, I may not know what I'm doing, but I'm taking a step. And the things I'm looking for are also taking a step. Are you seeing that now? All at once. Or this is what will happen. Step back. When I step to your level, you step forward. Are we together? Now, watch this. I am here right now. And I move forward. And these guys come. Now, notice, without prayer, some results start coming. Because I grew there. Now, my eye is here. And it's good to look far. But it's not going to come to your life. Listen. Hold on. Let me teach you something. If Papa E.A. Adeboye today empties his account this night, before 12 noon, millions will come back. I will tell you why. It's not because there are givers. It's not because he's a man of God. When the money disappears, the law of God will send a signal to heaven that this growth level should not have this kind of account reflect. The justice system of God must balance that destiny. This is what physics has tried to describe a long time ago. That there is a system of balance in life. It is not a lie. Please understand this. Now watch this. I sit down here as a confused Christian and if I'm not properly mentored, I quickly come here and lie down on someone's BMW and just say it is mine. If you mean it is yours with the law of process and engaging this, you are right. But you mean you want it now. Even if they give you now, there is a system design that will take it from you. See, let me tell you, it is why many people never hold on to things sustainably. They have balloon success. They open up today and shrink back again. There were certain things that it would be stupid for me to desire 10 years ago, 15 years ago. No, growth brought it. So I'm growing. Shakaba Katosia. Praying every day as I'm learning a key, as I'm sowing seeds, as I'm building. Look at what I'm doing. It's moving towards me. Moving towards me. Are you seeing that now? A time will come where everything that I see, come gentlemen. I will be immersed in my possibilities. I can no longer leave them. It will not make a difference again whether I give or don't give financially speaking. I've entered a realm of financial equilibrium. Where what goes and what comes, it doesn't make a difference. The only thing is just my faith with God. But at this level, when I give, I will know it. I will know something left me. Now watch this. Let me tell you what God is doing to you every week you are coming. You are right here. You may not know what is happening. Listen to me. Please, just be sensitive and pay attention. You may not know what it is that is happening to you. But this is the law of God. Man of God, don't sit back just admiring everybody. While you are praying, you are learning the principles. You are learning leadership. What you are doing is you are walking through life. What you are looking for is also looking for you. What you are looking for is also looking for you. A day will come by the Spirit of God. Hear me please. That day except God is not God. A day will always come. That includes the anointing. Watch this. Shift back. Call these dimensions of the anointing. My brothers, you cannot stand at this level and want to operate in the anointing and the spirit at this level. No matter what impartation, all this double portion prayer, of course, is just a sincere prayer by well-meaning people. Even the man of God knows it's not double portion that came on that person. It just fell down so that it's just hunger that was imparted to go back to the secret place. This is where Benny Hinn started. And he kept growing. He kept growing. He has to touch everybody here for them to be imparted. 
and he would be tired from hours of personal ministration. But as he stepped up, he got to a level where his word became his hands. It can reach people and touch them. It doesn't matter where. Now watch this. At this level, the anointing will not move till you play the keyboard, clash the cymbal, charge everywhere, till there is prayer, till the people fast, till their hearts are open. He thinks that's how God operates until he comes higher. You get to a realm where someone can be doubting you and still go under the anointing. He does not believe you. He even hates you, yet he's rising from a wheelchair. So what took him up? For every time you backslide, this is what happens. Every time you are offended and angry, I won't go to church again. I'm tired. This is what you are doing to yourself. Shifting you further. Sincerely, this thing I'm acting is how destiny works. Let me tell you this. Business people, hear me. If you believe that you will imaginarily stumble into millions just by meeting a business or an investment or become just stumble into it, you are joking, it will leave you. It is only growth that has the power to keep any possibility. So the way we succeed is not what we do, it is who we become. There is a version of me that should not be inside an aircraft. If I enter an aircraft, the aircraft will throw me out. Are we together? There is a version of me that should not have a car. If I want a car, I don't look for a car. I grow into the realm where a car was allocated. So when I'm here, watch this. In this realm as provided by God, there should be cars and there should be houses. If God says, so your car, and you give it, the realm itself will look for a replacement. It is God's system. There is a level that you stand, you will never have more than 500 members. It doesn't matter how many days you fast, you cannot have it. Your mind and your growth does not allow it. You can stand and be offended. The more you insult a man that has a crowd and say, what is crowd? This is what you are doing to your own results. You are authorizing the realm of the spirit to reject you when those possibilities come near you. But when you stand and grow and say, Lord, what did you show them? As the light of God is shining upon your head, you are moving from obscurity from mediocrity please understand what i teach you this is how the great rise that's why they are not afraid of their growth they did not jump they grew and jesus increased listen let me tell you this forget about poverty and forget about all of these things i'm not saying don't pay attention to them do you know you will grow and not know when this realm the possibilities there left you which tailor will sow my cloth oh you go around looking for a tailor, you will die looking for a tailor. Just grow. The tailor is waiting for the renewed version of you. There is a realm where a tailor has been kept to adorn you. Did Joseph look for the person who put his garment? Was he not in the prison? The garment maker was waiting for the renewed version of him. There are many things you are praying for now that have been answered already in your growth. Let me get a jeep. What is jeep, my brothers and my sisters? Don't mock the investment of the spirit upon your life. When you know this, anybody that receives a miracle is like the hand of a clock rotating. You start rejoicing because it's the same thing you are hearing. And you know that your turn is coming. See, let me tell you. Come. When you stand at this realm and people begin to pray and say, we know that one day, it will go down. This money will go down. The crowd, you see the foolishness of the imagination of weak men. You are not here by luck. The justice of God is what backs the result at this level. The only thing God can do with you is to vet you based on his eternal standard. But as far as these things live in you, it will never go again. The only thing is that your system of accreditation and growth and vetting it's not these things. No matter how God punishes you, please hear me, these things will not leave. 
the only way these things will leave is when you go back and you cannot undo what you already know that is the reason why Lucifer the light bearer can still make you prophesy can still make you wealthy Lucifer you can go to Satan because he stood in a position as the exalted light bearer of God and there were possibilities that were tied to his office when he fell the possibilities did not go the knowledge is still with him therefore the results still continue to come it is true it is true there is a version of Jesus that 5,000 men could not come to not the baby in the manger not the 12 year old Jesus not even the 30 unbaptized Jesus there was a version of Jesus that creation was waiting for and the father told that version creation now hear ye this version not the version in the tabernacle hear me everything you are looking for is looking for you but not this version of you so once and again your future keeps coming to you and checking if you are there and returns back and say we have not yet seen him your future is answering God so the Bible says creation is waiting waiting for the manifest creation keeps checking are they there he says they are not yet there but when you grow you will grow to a realm where creation will now see the manifestation of the songs of God please hear me there is a version of this ministry that we cannot go to at this level no there is a level of grace and power and intelligence and knowledge the future of this ministry is already waiting checking for us and saying koinonia has not arrived in that future koinonia is not yet there if we stop here god will have to make do with what is available but that's not what would have been so when we continue to grow a day will come this building will start driving us this building like a living thing will start saying go out go out of this environment and the environment waiting for us will start saying come you are ready there is a way you will grow that the house you are staying now will drive you it must drive you the key is not to start looking for another house the key is to wait you will know you are ready when the house starts driving you there are clothes you are wearing today that will run away you will not give it you will not sew it but you will not find it the same way you could not find the former ones you are wearing where were they where are they now the clothes you wore 10 years ago where is it you did not pack it in a bag and sold it where did it go to please understand what i teach you these are the secrets that the lord brought to me and gave me rest i don't chase things you can stay from your room and like a magnet attract anything from the globe provided it is on earth they will walk like the animals this was the strategy that brought the animals to the ark of noah the animals were in the bush if noah went looking for them one by one he would die there i show you this from scripture noah built the ark the moment the ark was ready this law started calling the animals one by one they started marching if animals came to the ark your money is on earth but the hand to collect it is not this hand there is a hand that is trained by the lord when you lift it from all over the earth it will come there was a time in this ministry i'm rounding up we didn't have a domiciliary account not because we didn't see the need to we just felt no problem when the time comes we'll cross do you know how we opened a domiciliary account i'm just giving you an example in this ministry i was somewhere when the manager of gt bank here the manager called me and he said sir i need to talk to you i'm the manager of gt bank i said okay no problem and then i spoke with him and he said someone people have been trying to make transfers international transfers and here and there they change it to naira and send it but that mm -mm, the the is becoming overwhelming and one did not care whether you have an account or not he sent the money and the money has been hanging with no account to credit it and he said please can we open an account that was a sign i said we have gotten there 
We have gotten to that level. If I open a domiciliary account 20 years ago for the ministry or 15 years ago, let me tell you what will happen. It will keep being dormant. You will reopen, dormant, reopen, dormant, reopen until the day your growth gets there, then you call it breakthrough. It was not just breakthrough. It was growth. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies. What you are mocking me with is in my future. I just need to grow there. My brothers and sisters, hear me. What is a house that it should intimidate you? What about the paint cannot be manufactured again? What about the space? Just be patient and grow. When you get to that point, you will grow there. You can patch through life and keep drawing results like a rubber ring. They will shoot back and leave you in shame. I choose the way of growth. There are levels this ministry has not gotten to. I'm not ashamed. We will stay honorably and grant God grace to take us there. But when we get there, there is a level we get to where the satellites will start calling and say, come, come, come. At that level, you will find out that five or six business partners will come and say, Apostle, we are paying for the TV station of this ministry for 10 years. You know growth by the ease it brings. When there is unnecessary suffering and difficulty, sometimes it's not just pushing through by faith. It's that you are forcing life to deliver a result you have not gotten there. Amazing the things I so desired in my life. And the way they come now, that you cannot even drive them. These are the keys of the kingdom. So you can stay from one room and your mind is in an estate. Not just by wishful thinking. You can stay as a man of God and everybody is despising you. They are not seeing the grace of God upon your life. Don't worry. You don't have to move around with cards and saying, do you know I'm anointed? I've been watching you. You are acting as if I'm not a man of God. Don't worry. Let me tell you, if you remain in the same position, it is not just an attack. It is proof that you are not growing. You know you are growing by the possibilities that start leaving and others that start coming. There are things your yesterday should leave you for your tomorrow to come. If your yesterday follows you into your today, you are still in yesterday. Are we together? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you and may you not forget this thing. Please rise up. Hold hands together. Our time is gone. Hold hands with someone we have to pray tonight. Hold someone's hands. There is no need to rush. All provided for in your growth. All provided for. Listen to me. Listen to me. Pastor Femi's tiny baby girl. Do you know that small girl has a womb? But that womb cannot have a child. Why? Growth. The womb is there. But the womb cannot be with child. Give him a few years and he will not only be a father, but he will be a grandfather. Sponsored by what? Growth. Men of God, hear me. Don't be part of any diabolic association and any fraternity of evildoers because you are trying to grow in ministry. Just grow. Just grow and let me see the darkness that will cover your impact. Just grow. As far back as April or May this year, my schedules up until June 2020 has been full. It is growth. Imagine that I have to go around every church and every place and say, do you know I'm anointed? Have you not heard of one guy called Apostle Joshua Selman? <laughs> Let me even talk for my... You see, if you act like that, you will, you will embarrass yourself. There are many doing it. If you have to advertise yourself, it's proof that there are no results. Most people don't know the power.
power of results. Results are so powerful. And it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. Please pay attention this week and don't miss church on Friday. Go back after this prayer. I apologize, our time is gone. Go and meet the media after the prayer or go on YouTube. Search for all the teachings where I taught on the mysteries of the kingdom and success system. Use this week to sit down on it. If you can fast even for one or two days, add it. Don't listen to it on your way to the office. You will not understand anything there. Settle down with destiny. Lie down on the ground. As a man of God, carry what... Please pray. And pray for an enlightened mind. Pray your way out of that level. Understand your way out of that realm. And get to a realm where no power and no enchantment is able to stand you. Pray in one minute for the person whose hands you are holding. Father, my brother, my sister must step into a realm of extraordinary fruitfulness. Please make sure you are praying. You will get to a point where your life becomes a praise to the nations. A generation cannot ignore you. It's impossible. Impossible. Awesome God. How great thou art. You alone, mighty are your miracles. I stand in awe of your holiness. Lord, we bow and worship. Pray. Ala baranda kata brada gedesh. Abaranda kaparusa tia. I leave this realm and I never return. I rise like the eagle. I rise like the eagle. I rise like the eagle by the spirit of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen, the last prayer point and we're done tonight. Let it be a passionate prayer. Father, turn me into a sign and a wonder. Please pray that prayer. Not that I walk signs and wonders. Let my life be a testament, a sign and a wonder. Let my life be a sign and a wonder. Let my life be a sign and a wonder. A demonstration of what God can do in and through men that can believe Him and understand His ways. Turn my life to a sign and a wonder. Turn my life to a sign and a wonder in the mighty name of Jesus turn my life to a sign and a wonder hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you see, 
Dear people of God, hear me. There is nothing that should intimidate you about any man's results. It is not magic. There is no result on earth today that cannot be replicated. None. Not one. There is no result on this earth today that cannot be replicated. There is no reason to be intimidated. It is only the understanding that we need to have and follow through life to a realm where you become a wonder first to yourself and to everybody to all and sundry and then your life becomes a praise to the name of the Lord you may not look like it now but hear me my brothers and my sisters be patient with God and be patient with destiny let God finish his working in your life you will turn back and all you will see left and right is the praises of his name may that be our testimony in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord we're still going to pray one prayer point Matthew chapter 13 Ooh. the presence of God is mighty in this place Matthew chapter 13 we'll read from verse 14 Matthew chapter 13 mighty God and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive next verse for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Next verse. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Just keep that verse there. Say blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Turn this into a prayer and command your eyes to see and for your ears to hear lift your voice and pray blessed are your eyes for this shalabatakata shabradiga devos lebadash kabando brahaska devalakos Shila barakato sabrande gedi balas, skade brande gade balahas sabras. Shala brande gedi balara bakuye. Are you praying, everyone? Open my eyes, so oh God. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated and be very sensitive while that happens to you. Be sensitive. The power of God is mighty in this place. And what the Lord is about to show us will truly be a key that will lift us in the name of Jesus. This entire seven days will be a feast of keys in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will grant us grace, spiritual illumination, Hallelujah. Tonight, very briefly, we'll start off. There is, there is so much to share. I just pray that these seven days will really allow us to do justice to these truths. Praise the Lord. 
but God by his word is appearing unto us and he will bless and lift us in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on someone in overflow one there is a lady in overflow one please carry the person and bring the person I want to speak to the person before we get to the word I'm seeing the hand of God rest on a lady in overflow one please bring the lady and let's trust God for grace can we still pray for that and say Lord do something in my life give me results give me real results take me past the realm of guessing to the realm of mastery in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is saying he is bringing the captivity of your family to an end you see it will sound like a joke until you hear the testimony when Ejimi was sharing here this is the word of God come straight and it's over except the word does not come when it comes to you that is the end of it this is what we came for that we will encounter his word listen listen let me tell you something challenges are relative they are relative to the grace that confronts them challenges are not general it depends on the grace that confronts them that's why God is granting us access He's granting us illumination praise the Lord illumination illumination even by his spirit this row just right here this row down I'm seeing two people who are receiving the spirit of revelation just this last row down like this this is what I'm seeing in the spirit the spirit of revelation and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me two of them and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and the spirit entered me and the spirit entered me if someone praying let your spirit be alive you are not only watching you are receiving like Kenny shared there is a grace to receive a grace to receive a grace to receive be sensitive gentlemen be sensitive grace to receive grace to receive overflow two overflow two the Lord is bringing speed I'm seeing like an arrow but this is not evil this is a grace a grace please bring them overflow two Someone's hunger is touching the heavens. We'll get to the word shortly. Let's just do justice to what God is doing. God is bringing speed. Overflow two. Particularly overflow two. Speed. No more delay by the spirit of God.
And the people say, Holy, 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 Holy. No more delay. In the name that is above all names. In the name that is above all names. In the name that is above all names. God is taking away limitations. He's doing it by His Spirit. He's taking away limitations. He's taking away limitations taking away limitations in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah father bless our hearts in the name of Jesus please be seated one of the ushers the spirit of the Lord is saying I should tell you the set time has come this is one of the ushers just the ushers the set time has come the set time has come this is a prophetic word for one of the ushers the set time has come that's what the lord is saying and when god speaks like this there is a grace that brings and makes for performance one of our ushers the lord is prophesying that your set time has come jeremiah chapter 9 let's get to the word the glory that excels Jeremiah chapter 9, we'll start from verse 23. 23. Thus saith the Lord, please pay attention. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Next verse. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That he understandeth and knoweth me. The Bible starts by listing four categories of people alongside the fact that every of those dimensions carries glory. He starts by saying, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So there is glory in that level of wisdom that wisdom there is not divine wisdom Sophia human wisdom scientific wisdom wisdom that is a product of exploring life for a long time it says let not please go back 23 let not the wise man glory in his wisdom when the Bible says to not do something it means that it is possible to do it are we together that means there is a level of glory that the wisdom of this world can bring then he moves to the next level he says neither let the mighty man glory in your might so there is glory in might there are men and women with all kinds of might intellectual might military might and there is a level of glory that you see there number three he says let not the rich man glory in his riches it means there is glory in riches are we together that it is possible for you to be rich and there is a glory there and then he says but let him that glory it so in any case there must be glory but he's only giving you a reference listen carefully he is not saying glory in strength and all of this and he's showing you an excellent dimension that there is glory in the wisdom of men are we together now there is glory in might there is glory in riches however this is the kind and the dimension i want your glory to be a derivative of the fact that you understand and you know me because in understanding and knowing me there is a representation of all these glories you forsake that you ignore the glory that comes with the wisdom of men you ignore the glory that comes with might aside from god you ignore the glory that comes with riches outside of god and then you seek to understand and know him he says there is a glory that is in that experience that is surpassing 
greater than the glory that comes all of these dimensions of glory they are there but he's showing you that there is a glory that excels there is a glory that excels the wisdom of men there is a glory that excels the might of men there is a glory that excels earthly riches he says that glory is a product of an encounter that you understand and you know me that means that if four of us stand we can both emit levels of glory but i can trace the basis of that glory i can know that your glory comes just from earthly riches your glory comes from sophia human wisdom your glory comes from the military might but i can look at a man and know that this one this glory is a product of knowing god is it not written in your bible that the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits the word glory is very important the glory of a thing is a measure of its worth listen carefully in the simplest term the glory of a thing is a measure of its worth a measure of its value a measure of its desirability the more glorious a person and a thing is the more you are desired the more the weight of the value that is placed on you and so imagine with me for instance that all of these dimensions are like gold that you are placing on a scale so you place the glory that comes from earthly wisdom and the scale will measure it you will write it you place the glory that comes with riches and might but then that there is a glory that the scale cannot measure when it comes from knowing God, you drop it, it's a glory that excels. It's an all-surpassing glory. Please pay attention, I'm building something now. So the Bible begins to contrast. Number one, he says it is important that the saints glory, but it tells you what to glory in. Because herein is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. In your being glorified, God is being glorified. John 17, Jesus said, The hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may give you glory. Meaning an unglorified saint cannot bring glory to the Father. The glory of the Father is in the glory of the saints. Are we together now? That if there is a dimension of glory the saints do not express, it will short circuit the understanding of creation about God. Glorify now thy son, that thy son will bring you glory. Add weight to your son, add desirability. Put something within him that the rich outside you cannot have. Put something within him that the wise outside you cannot have. That when you stand on the scale of destiny is a weight that cannot be measured. The glory that excels. Hmm. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus taught a mystery that I want to connect to this very quickly. His mysteries were captured in his parables. And in one of the parables, he teaches us on the mystery of wineskins please give us verse 18 mark chapter 2 there is a glory that excels and the disciples of john and the pharisees and you know and they came home to him and said to him why do the disciples of john and of the pharisees fast oh dear but thy disciples fast not 19 and jesus said he's replying a question remember that the foundation of this question was the issue of rituals structures systems keep that in mind so he was challenging jesus's violation of a system this is the basis for this statement there is a methodology there is a way things were done and now they found out that jesus was routing his system he was not conforming to what they were doing and they they were questioning his authority what gave you the audacity to come up with another formula 
we are used to this this is the ritual but now jesus we see you mentoring your disciples through another route and jesus is replying can the children of the bridegroom or bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them as long as they have the bridegroom with them they cannot fast 20. but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then they shall fast in those days 21. he says no man now listen he's buttressing on this point now no man also sewed a piece of new cloth on an old garment else the new piece that filled it up take it away from the old and the rent is made worse are we together now next verse and no man put it new wine into old bottles or an old wine skin why else the new wine don't bust the bottles and the wine is spilled and the the bottles will be mad but the new wine must not may be put in a new wine skin listen very carefully jesus is teaching them something here very powerful and then he now brings this his parables on the cloth and then more importantly the wine skin he's saying that if you put wine skin i hope you know that the wine skin he now calls old was once new don't forget that what he now calls old was by a reference new and now he's saying that if you are bringing new wine that it is not possible to bring new wine and put it in an old wine skin that the effect it will be better to have left the old wine and the old wine skin that if you try to mix them there will be a reaction and that that reaction will make the condition worse listen carefully there is a reason why revivals never last there is a reason why the move of God comes for a while. Revival, revival, revival. People organize programs and for one or two weeks, people feel spiritual. They feel connected and one month later, everyone has gone back to his ways. The reason is because we continue to violate the condition that makes for new wine to be comfortable. The focus is never on the new wine. He says you attract new wine by doing something to the wine skin. You don't ask new wine to come. Something must happen to the wine skin that automatically attracts new wine. Listen carefully. Wine skin in scripture is symbolic of structures and systems. You have to understand this. It's not only just symbolic of a man. It's symbolic of methodologies and strategies. That for every move of God, there is a pattern and there is a spiritual formation that can contain it and host it. Are we together now? I shared with you in one of the services how that when it came to killing the Philistines, God gave Samson a revelation and he took the dry bone, jaw bone of an ass and he killed the Philistines with it. As soon as he was done, he was asked to throw it. Sometimes you don't throw things because they have stopped working. You throw them because they will not be needed again, although they are still working. The Bible never said the old wine skin were already torn. It could still contain it but that new wine in an old wine skin cannot last every move of God and every dimension of glory has a spiritual formation that you must assume otherwise the glory will not be comfortable around you and it will be wasted this is what Jesus is teaching that anything anything that is new from heaven that is coming the focus is not on what is coming the focus is on the preparation Ejimi shared that scripture powerfully here. When it was time for them to experience the glory of God, there were conditions. He said, sanctify yourself. One day is not enough. Two days is not enough. Three days is not enough. Prepare yourself. And even at that, when they saw the glory they were preparing for, they said, Moses, you go and just talk with God. Whatever he tells you, tell us, we will listen. 
most people are not prepared for what they pray for because the glory of God listen is one thing to ask and continue to ask one of the reasons why the glory of God may elude certain people the weightiness of his presence it may be that we continue to desire that the new wine comes upon the old wine skin and God says my not giving you is an act of my mercy because there will be a reaction when the new wine comes upon the old wine skin that your condition will be worse than you currently are that means it is possible to dish out revelation and a believer's life starts failing from the day he had that revelation it is not only error that destroys there is a dimension of truth you can bring and from the day the believer received it his life begins to go down because the effect of that new wine on his old wine skin creates room for his own destruction this is not a demon this is not satan this is a spiritual reaction jesus is teaching us here so he's giving us a word of caution that if it is true that you need a new wine skin then you must find out the structure when the glory of God was going to rest upon the tabernacle in the Old Testament at that time the tabernacle was a new wine skin so Bezalel and Aholiab had to receive from God the blueprint the kind of tabernacle that can host the glory they were praying for are we together now they were never to be left to decide God come read your Bible God never comes until a people are prepared by his standards not by their desire not by their cry not by their hunger whenever God wants to come bringing his anointing his grace and all the possibilities contained in him there will be a requirement you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin we're talking about the glory of God here that there is a glory that excels but I'm showing you the technology by which men transit to rise to superior realms every old wine was once a new wine this is what I want you to know no old wine starts as old wine the tabernacle the law was once new wine the tabernacle in the wilderness was once new wine but a day came when God said I'm connecting this story now they were used to the new wine they saw the glory that came with the tabernacle the ark of the covenant they saw the victories that it brought for them now Jesus appears and then they are saying Jesus if you are from God you must fit into this structure and he says I agree it was one a new wine skin but now I'm bringing in something do you have the flexibility and the unashamedness to restructure and adjust your vessel and sometimes replace it completely so that you can host the new he was speaking to scribes he was speaking to Pharisees when they saw his miracles and they saw the things that he did they looked at their structure and wondered why those structures did not host that thing I hope you know God was the one who instituted their structure but God had left their structure once upon a time John was the new wine skin that was being used the theology that John brought was the most current dealing of the spirit John was in the wilderness and God was giving him mysteries until then there was nobody who could stand as anything newer than John Jesus himself testified that of all the prophets no matter what they saw nobody read John's dimension of glory but John was wise when Jesus came he said behold the lamb and John said look I know that with respect to this I have become an old wine skin let me decrease that he will increase are you seeing that technology I decrease this is the vessel that God is pouring his glory and when you look up to him then you are not ashamed John departed and his disciples were offended because at a point they felt John what are you doing 
you were shining you were the person at the center stage your entire theology was what we built our lives on and right now you are asking us are you trying to say all you have taught us was error and john was trying to say no i'm only showing you that there is another dimension of glory that has come and my structure cannot hold that glory i was a forerunner now that that glory has come follow that glory amazing that john himself didn't follow the glory and not even him was spared john died whereas others were being resurrected there was a provision in a new structure that john could not experience he died in offense he died in pain he died hating jesus he died probing the messiahship of jesus the man who ordained Jesus to ministry, the man who caused that his heavens were open, he said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah or should we seek for another? Notice that every time they fought Jesus, they didn't just fight the miracles, they fought the wineskin, the structure. Why are you coming with another pattern? They caught a woman who was in adultery and there was a structure already that when this woman is caught, you don't discuss, you stone her and immediately Jesus looks at them and creates another order. Listen to me. You cannot put new wineskin, new revelation, new anointing, new glory, old structure that does not have the provision to receive it. The question is to sustain the sacrifice and the flexibility that even if it means to tear the old wine to give way let me tell you that's not as easy as it sounds that's why we are here tonight if it was that easy many people will carry the glory that excels the hardest part of the coming of the glory is not its arrival it is the level of stretching that happens to a man to have the new wine skin that makes for the space that this new glory will come upon that's why we are here we can we can shout and jump and say greater anointing oh god greater this do you know that the level of living is not the same every level of glory has its rules and conditions this is it so we may be born again but the spiritual levels and the levels of glory that come out of us will have certain rules because of the level god has taken you he will give you a rule that is only applicable to you on earth no other person it may not make sense but that is the price to keep the wine skin new and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you i wrote something down here listen that every level of glory has its demands there is a price to pay for every dimension of the glory of god that we seek to have many people think it's just automatic just because jesus died no sir there is a demand for every face and every level of glory the new wine skin is formed when you are willing to subscribe to the terms that make for higher glory you form the new wine skin by making a decision that lord i desire this dimension of your glory i desire this dimension of your weightiness your presence upon my life now please listen listen somewhere along this conference we are going to be doing an impartation but many of us let me be sincere with you the reason why so many men of god continue to pray and lay hands on you and they bless you from their heart you can go around and say i met bishop oedeko i met papa deboye have you met this yes but nothing in your life reflects the glory because there was a repulsion their prayer brought the glory but it met a structure that would not allow it you see that you believe that you receive because you fell down but i'm telling you now that your falling down was not your receiving look at the strict condition elisha went through 
to carry a mantle i hope you know it was elijah that was teaching other people they were the students in the school of the spirit yet it was not enough for them to carry the, the bible testifies they were in his school think how much of an angry man elijah was i won't be surprised that elijah slapped elijah was that kind of tamper that calls fire will you want to work with such a person once upon a time elijah was the new wine skin and the wine skin kept looking for a replacement all over he looked at the entire prophets and none of them had the formation none not once and there was a man who kept stretching himself went beyond gilgal went all through and while that was happening elijah was watching elijah continued to frustrate him intentionally and that guy would not be offended look at all the attributes that were preparing him for that mantle then when they cross beyond jordan elijah looks at him and says you are really desperate i i see the formation you are looking like me now the the kind of alignment i i remember this and i know that you are about to receive something and he says what do you want then the man said sir with all due respect i know where you stopped i went more than that i can take twice you could not take twice your own anointing where you stopped i respect it but my i stretch myself beyond the capacity of that level of grace and he said one more test young man the last test was the test of sight the test of sight not just the test of physical endurance all right you have qualified but one last test if it is true that you stretch the way you claim something should have happened to your eyes and so let me see if you really pass the test because anyone who stretches enough for a double portion something should have happened to his eyes it is impossible to say you have stretched like that and your eyes is still blind therefore my dear son if you can see me as i rise and he looked and suddenly the eyes he said i see you oh my father my father the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof listen the anointing came without confusion and he went to jordan he said where is the lord god of elijah he parted it and it parted hither and thither and the moment that happened the prophet saw him and they said the spirit of elijah dot rest on elijah they were so ignorant they didn't even know it was two times it was a double portion graces don't just come anointings don't just come there is a glory that excels listen carefully prosperity does not just come liftings don't just come i tell you the reason why the move of god and the treasures of this kingdom never stay on people it will come for a while and then our lack of structure will fight it and it will go so you find out that churches experience certain moves of the spirit for three weeks strange signs and wonders angelic encounters and then it leaves they never experience it again could this be why sometimes when prophecy comes the results happen slowly and then it lifts because you receive the prophecy it came from heaven but the spiritual formation that will allow it says now arise oh god from where you are we have prepared a structure that will make you feel comfortable whether you are in heaven or you are in solomon's temple now arise oh lord it says come to your resting place this is even how demons work they don't just enter anybody they search for a formation that looks like where they are coming from or better than it so when a demon look at a man he knows you are not aligned enough for manipulation so it will continue to create systems around your life that tilt you to be aligned enough then it can come was it not in your bible that when a demon leaves a man when it is returning it doesn't return alone it doesn't just return double portion it gathers seven of its kind and comes for many years i wanted to know the mystery 
behind the very heavy investment of God's presence in others as against others and I gauged it by many parameters and I found out it didn't match I gauged it by many spiritual parameters until I found out that this was the secret now arise O Lord come to your resting place that means consistently from heaven mantles and graces and new levels are searching they continue to move around every service looking for new wine skins and they may not find wine skins here is the answer to why men can be in church for many years and someone will just come and receive the person came with hunger he had stretched himself someone else is standing amen 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 and nothing is happening let me tell you my brothers and my sisters I will show you what to do to the wine skin and then you will see the kind of glory and power that will come upon your life my life changed and the grace of God upon my life took another dimension all of these dimensions you see me walking in they were never there I prayed and said Lord what is the secret thank God for impartation but I knew that mm -mm, impartation is the last step to this thing there is a way why did Elijah have to go through this laborious journey with Elisha why there is a huge price for the glory that excels you want to speak and let things just happen you want God to touch the hearts of men no this thing is not acting my brothers and my sisters it is not even just about praying 10 hours it is not even just about fasting dry fast there is something that must happen from within now arise O oh Lord come to your resting place you and the ark of your might and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness celebrate I remember some years ago one night I, I will never forget that night I was watching William Branham and tears filled my eyes that night I was so tired I was sleepy but I was watching him and you know the whole documentary on him and I said why do people insult this man you know they make it look like he backslided he left God just because he missed some things here and there there are graces that when you carry I will show you there is you have to ask God to help you stand the heaviness of that grace even you God will have to support you otherwise you will not stand I had a vision I will share with you some visions that I've never shared here during this conference let me finish the William Branham story we're going to pray I remember that night I was looking at this man and for the first time a sense of honor and compassion I said this is an amazing servant of God the humility that came from that man's life versus all the nonsense that ignorant people kept saying I said look at the look at this man of God look at the grace that comes out of this man and something strange happened to me it was like light from my laptop something cold just rested on my head gradually I didn't used to walk in the prophetic here and there maybe word of knowledge this and that here and there and something cold gradually it took more than 30 minutes it was entering me the next meeting I went to it was like a shock that was when I started seeing angelic presence like lights like ribbons and I said what is this that I'm seeing let me tell you mantles are still looking for men the problem is that there are too many old wineskins structures that refuse to bend structures that refuse to adjust One day, I kept praying. I wrote the names of certain fathers of faith.
that I was praying that God would put upon me the grace that he put upon them and then I had a dream in that dream I was in Canaan land I think then okay they just a few years after they had built uh, let's see no I'm not sure it was more than it wasn't yet up to 10 years since they built the the auditorium there and then I found myself preaching and just like the stage here I was standing you have to just keep your toe just the tip of your toe that's how you stand to preach and the stage was shaking and I couldn't stand well and I said is this how these guys stand to preach that's what I saw in that vision that means all you see is not just standing on stage many people are standing on there are weights there are gracious people carry that the moment you talk about them in the secret that grace was designed because of the weightiness there are extra privileges that come with it you will find out that your heavens will close alone in the secret no demonic assistance just because of the weightiness of it it is true my brothers and my sisters that even among the stars one different from another in glory in glory this that looks small is a deep spiritual secret it's possible to remain at the same level and God sees that you are better off at that level but if it is the glory that excels that you want to receive a dimension of his weightiness you want to add weight to your spiritual life the requirement is not just prayer the requirement is not just Bible study I'm going to show you the requirement turn with me please very quickly to 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 many of you have not been trained to have regard for the glory of God that comes upon men second corinthians chapter 4 from verse 17 please for our light affliction which is but for a moment what is the affliction doing walk it for us stop stop there is a raw material that trains men the bible calls it affliction i know you don't <laughs> for this hammer that i use walk it in me this vessel that affliction is like a hammer that can chisel a man he may not know what is happening but there is a a, a formation happening our light affliction apostle paul is writing that walk it for us a what i told you there is a glory that excels if it is that weight of glory you want there is a dimension of affliction that the bible says it is a tool that is used you don't like the nice message i know <laughs> hmm. what do you think makes god to have a covenant with a man not old testament not new testament what do you think empowers that you make a statement and god just honors you reading the bible just praying in the night no sir no sir there are secrets one of them is your volunteering to affliction it was it didn't it say i bear in my he said let no man trouble me i carry a glory that excels and here are the scars that show for it let no demon resist me because i carry a glory that excels and here is the scar that shows you want to be an envoy of his presence you want to host the glory of god you want to host the power of god let me tell you there are some sacrifices if you make in the kingdom god will not allow you make other kinds again forever it is true it is true sir there are men and women because of the sacrifice they've had with god god will never allow them to learn about money again in this life it will never happen it's an exemption for them 
because of what there is an accreditation that happened in that place of pain it's true i always wondered why so many people broke certain principles that i knew that made for certain results and then it looks like life will punish everybody and jump them life will punish everybody and jump them and i said why and god said i am just find out they paid an equivalent of that sacrifice already it is true my brothers and my sisters it is true there is a glory that excels but the bible says for our light affliction which is but for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory next verse it says while we look not at the things what are the things the afflictions the things that are seen but the things that are unseen it says for the things that are seen are temporal temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal romans chapter 8 from verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings you know this is paul writing i hope you know it was the same paul that wrote to third of the new testament when paul says i glory in my affliction now you understand what he was saying how do you glory in affliction believers tell me how you glory in affliction that a man is in chains and bonds and he calls it glory I wish what I were telling you were not true was it not because of what Mary was going to carry that all the trouble came upon her life Mary was an innocent virgin for God's sake minding her business and here comes this young carpenter you just ask her out all of a sudden an angel comes and says Mary there is something we are, we are looking for who can carry it we have been searching other women and they refused probably some had the dream and they casted it mm, leave me i want peace in my life and here comes mary let me tell you if everyone were available the angel will not come it looked like gabriel had been searching and finally he says let me try this one we bring you salutation of great joy and she wondered what salutation he said this is what will happen to you and then the woman says be it unto me she thought she was saying let me be pregnant no the process that will allow me to carry the word for nine months be it unto me from that day mary got in trouble to the point that joseph was saying madam i don't know what is it that happened between you and this ghost i don't know which rabbi you are calling an angel but i i won't embarrass you but me i'm going what happens when things start going down and it started the day god spoke to you you were minding your business and it looked like you were better off the day a voice came you will be a mighty man of god from that day your life it looks like god what i was minding myself i was living a happy quiet wonderful life then you go to lie down and sleep and you are seeing a generation and you say god please leave my peace I want my plan is to live a nice life ah. this is the price for carrying the burden of a generation king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you i preached a message years ago called the fullness of affliction and several people said all kinds of things against the message and i said oh dear God has an economy. God has a non-negotiable system. This is the reason why he loves everybody, but not everybody carries the same weight of glory. 
my brothers and my sisters the glory of god upon a man is not dependent on his predeterminate counsel is how much you are willing to be stretched until you are reformed like the potter sometimes you will need to smash that clay again and start building you built it before into a vessel and then you will smash it back and that clay is you hallelujah it's a very very huge sacrifice to carry the glory of God the weightiness of his presence most times we admire the results that we see but let me tell you my brothers and my sisters behind the veil what you see there is the blood and the tears that came with lifting this weight it's a heavy weight a far more exceeding weight of glory a far more exceeding weight of glory hallelujah that you speak to a man and his life does not change you go back to god and say lord why now i spoke and god says no there is a glory level there is there not every part of the mountain delivers the same result it says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord is a journey if an aircraft will not keep you at the top of the hill you will walk there were five thousand men aside women and children who climb up the mountain and they were privy to hear certain things that others did not hear the way to the throne is the cross the way to the throne is the cross you will never get to the throne ignoring the cross the only ladder that you will use to climb the throne of destiny is the cross where God will give you a governmental grace to speak over nations you become Beulah and Hephzibah the desire of nations notice in the parable of the talents do you know the real blessing that happened to them it was not well done good and fit. i used to think he was well done good and faithful servant until one day the spirit of the lord says study it and i found out well done good and faithful servant was a pattern of their back certain portions were up, were given to them territorial influences that was the blessing the labor of doing something with what they were given qualified them for these dimensions at every level at every level please listen to me carefully at every level there is a demand there is a level of sacrifice there is a level of real sacrifice that makes for certain glories but Paul said compared to the glory that that level delivers the sacrifice can be called a light affliction second Corinthians chapter 3 we are going to pray from verse 9 and 10 it says for if the ministration of condemnation talking about the law now carried some glory in it he said much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory next verse he says for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels that there is a level you can walk with god my brothers and my sisters and through this sacrifice of remolding yourself to become a new wine skin that god will put a dimension of his glory that when you look back what you used to call glory that it is not glory in this respect a level of signs and wonders a level of the performance of god's word a level of increase and grace a level of prosperity the wealth of the kingdom a level of spiritual illumination it comes by that track record of pain and sacrifice 
sacrifice the weightiness of God's glory finding vessels that can fit it the weightiness of God's power finding vessels that can receive it the weightiness of the spirit of revelation finding men there are times that it comes close and you fall it you can't even host it first and then it goes back waiting for you to truly become that vessel it says but we all like living stones we are being chiseled and built into a spiritual house a house that can host god there are many things in my life today i would have prayed for for so long to come but sometimes just a desire in my heart is enough to bring it the secret is that when you contend for the glory that excels please hear me if you're a man of god here hear me twice what we call ministry now in the next five years many people will be frustrated because there are people pressing into these dimensions genuinely there are people that desire tangibility substance of the spirit they are the ones who will become the desire of nations and many others will pale and fade in glory this is not backsliding this is that god has begun something it's a new order and like john the baptist and like the scribes you may scrounge around for relevance but the light now is on jesus the question therefore is are you willing to subscribe to the demands demands of lifestyle demands of covenant listen it will cost you everything the price for all of god is all of you let me say it again the price for all of god is all of you write it media let the world lend this the price for god's head is not all of you the price for god's hand is not all of you the price for god's heart and all of him is all of you that's why we can see certain dimensions you just want the wisdom of god or some dimensions of his creativity but not all of him if you want to host god then all of you must be beaten like the potter with the clay it's not a gospel that many people like nobody likes suffering nobody likes affliction we were not designed that way that's why it's a sacrifice There is a glory that excels but it will come upon vessels that have been worked on changed he says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then it says we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a glass we are changed you know it looks like once you are just looking you are being changed ask elijah it was not just looking like it was saying there is a dynamics of death that works in you so that life will work in other people let me tell you this 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 thing i'm teaching you is a is a master mystery even in the occult and those who practice all of these things they are the level of glory in quote if i will use that word is corresponding to the, the level of tremendous sacrifice i remember reading a book about a, a somebody who would receive some kind of strange power and the condition was to fast non-stop for 150 days if you miss one day you start afresh you don't continue you fast to a point that you don't know whether you have eaten or not there is your body has lost the ability to tell you whether you are full or you are hungry so god will want to take you to certain realms and god will now say oh pastor alpha because of what i'm about to do for the next five months i will need every 12 to 3 a.m of your time not three to five regardless of what the event is the demand is 12 o'clock to 3 the next six months think about it if you are interested let me know you will be free from 9 to 11 that's not the timing god gave you you will even be free from 4 till forever you will find out that you will be so 
tired by 11 45 you don't know if you are standing or sitting but you remember that our light affliction you may look stupid see it's difficult to do these things when you have people that love you they will pity you too much to allow you continue the pain of what you go through it will attract their sympathy that's why abraham told the servants wait here i have to go alone with my sacrifice if those servants were on the mountain they will fight abraham and bring isaac down there are certain things when god wants to do in your life you will, you will have to agree with him that you will be alone in this so that he can do with you what he wants because the innocence and the humanity of men sometimes will interrupt the process if you're married and you see your husband eating once a week and acting like a strange man one day you will be tired you will close the door and sit down there and start crying and whether he's, he's serious with God or not the compassion that comes from that union will make him say God whatever it is please let me just let me just let me just subscribe to the demands of my wife what do you think made John the greatest prophet have you studied John's life how much of his life was in public view look at how John was born from that time at least for Jesus we saw what happened the first 12 years what happened to the next 18 years of Jesus is something you should find out because the Bible does not tell us any other thing again about Jesus from age 12 until 30 we see a man coming what happened for those 18 years what happened to the 19 years of Paul in the wilderness of Arabia what happened to the 40 years of Moses at the backside of the mountain let me show you that this is consistent with men who carry glory it is not new it didn't start now are we together John the Baptist the Bible just shows us that there is an adult in the wilderness who was given a, a what I would call a wicked prescription there was meat those days there was fish those days there was wine those days but he dressed in camel skin and then he was in the wilderness and the only food that he was allowed to eat was locusts and wild honey was he not the prophet that was told to sleep on one side for one year i don't know if you don't read your bibles did you read about the prophet who ate animal dung for one year I tell you why our generation is powerless we are noisy people but there's no power this is it we hate the sacrificial dimension that brings the glory let him that glory and glory in this that he knoweth me he understands my way and because of his subscribing to my patterns he can carry a glory that is greater than the glory of the wise greater than the glory of the strong greater than the glory of the rich there are men let me tell you i believe that there are people who will open up their hearts and say lord i am willing let's go this journey i am willing i am willing you know most times we sing songs of surrender we just sing them as special numbers i want you now to think because god answers those prayers use me oh god i'm available and god says i'm listening keep talking do with me anything you want to do uh, have you had that kind of prayer god says thank you this is all i've been asking you it's a dangerous prayer to say do with me what you want it's even dangerous to sing it do with me what you want do with me what you want you study the scapegoat that was taken malhandled and taken everywhere he was led like a sheep to the slaughter do with me what you want lord my life is yours do with me what you want and god says okay i look at you and i need to chisel here and here can i go on and you say lord i've said do with me what you want the first hammer touching you, you say god is this it no 
I changed my mind. Is it by force? I'm already born again. God says, it's not by force. But then the glory you seek, do not be angry when you see it on another person. So many men of God can be here. But there is glory that excels corresponding to the spiritual sacrifices let me tell you this is a non-negotiable condition there are cups you don't pray to pass you you obtain the grace to drink them he said grant that you know when you have conquered caesar etc etc let me sit at your left and right the mother of james and john was asking jesus didn't say there is no vacancy he said you want to sit close to me here is the condition one can you drink of my cup internal and can you be baptized with my baptism the woman didn't answer it for the children john would later answer it and he paid for it he really did he was at the isle of patmos but that guy had so pressed into these things that hot oil had no effect on him. And Peronero said, what do we do with this guy now? We have tried to roast him in oil. It didn't work. And they banished him to an isle called Patmos. These are the men, the Bible says, the earth is not worthy of. There is a reason why the earth is not worthy. They walked sometimes like fugitives and vagabonds looking for a city whose builder and maker is the Lord. They so pressed into these things for some of them life made no sense again. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have anoint my everything use my everything i release my everything you have my everything say take all of me all of me lord you have my everything take all of me all of me lord I thought Jesus being the son of God, Jakes, should, should exempt him from this pattern. Why will the son of God be in the wilderness? Talk to me, believers. The son of God left heaven, born of the spirit. It didn't change the pattern. As soon as Jesus came out of the water, it was not a demon that drove him. There are many times what drives you to that wilderness is not always Satan. The spirit didn't speak. He drove him to the wilderness. Notice that every time these men were in these places, they were alone. It's not a corporate thing. It's not a husband and wife thing. It's not a classmate. It's not a roommate thing. It is you and God and your destiny. This is the price it takes to be trusted with the keys of a generation. This is the price it takes to become the face of God to a generation. It's not by voting. It's not by popularity census. It's not by likes and shares. It's a testament of a sacrifice in the spirit. Known by both God and demons. Believers, either we are just playing games and we truly do not desire to be the carriers of this glory or someone here will be willing to pray. Listen, let me tell you, you would think the sacrifice to host God's glory is hard until you see the alternative. The alternative is a miserable life of guessing left, right and center with your destiny shattered and you are, you are a victim of just anything. Jesus paid the price once. And he was ready by this time many years ago Jesus was in hell hellfire Jesus hellfire Jesus Hades the place of the dead and the father was watching 
and all these demons were upon their own creator the word of god that proceeded ah but though weeping endures for a night one thing i know is that affliction does not remain forever it has an expiry date when the legal claims of justice were made paul reveals to us by the spirit that jesus made a public show of them triumphing over them and one of the things he got in hell so there can be keys in hell and you will need to go down to hell to get some keys sometimes you will need to go down to come up with keys jesus descended before he ascended so you will rise up by going down are we together now and he collected the keys and in revelations he said i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys the coronation service only happened when he went through this We are going to pray tonight there is a glory that excels i bring you a very powerful mystery the glory that excels romans chapter 12 and verse 1 i beseech thee brethren who is he talking to brethren not unbelievers I beseech thee brethren by the mercies of God that you do what offer offer your bodies as a not a sacrifice a living sacrifice let me tell you what that means a sacrifice that remains a sacrifice when a sacrifice dies it stops being a sacrifice it's over the real sacrifice was the life of that object so when the life goes there's no more sacrifice it is the process of extracting life from that thing that is the sacrifice now he says you are a sacrifice you are alive but it's a posture you will continue to take holy and acceptable unto god and he says it's your reasonable act of worship I have found this key from the day i found this key i stopped being afraid of pain i stopped being afraid of sacrifice i became friends with it and i found out that in that darkness that's where light comes from god who had commanded light to shine out of darkness not into darkness out of darkness darkness is the mother that gives birth to light and the evening came and the morning and the evening came and the morning let me encourage you listen to me listen to me very carefully be careful so that you don't judge things from the standpoint of men there are certain things that you may be passing through that you may think these things are happening just because of unbelief i told you that faith doesn't always receive it also takes faith to release you lose things too by faith by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice there were women who their children died and instead of them to raise them back they said no problem let them go and the bible calls it faith read it it's not everybody who brought their child back to life that were called men of faith others died Do you know why plants grow? Because they subscribe to this same principle. Death and glory. When you carry a seed and throw it on the earth, what happens? You studied agri. What happens? The life is in the death, Jakes. You come back after two days. If you open it, you will see that there is no more beauty. There is no beauty in the grave. There is no comeliness. There is only the death that brings resurrection. And notice what happens. The first thing that happens is some process of decay and even degradation. And then out of the rottenness, it begins to open. It's deshaping as bad as it is. 
is making room for something new and sometimes it can be so bad that part of the old one will come out too with a new one and you can look at it and know this is the dead seed and this is the one that grows I wish I can tell you the glory of God comes just by speaking and saying receive grace there are you want to be given the keys of a nation my brother and my sister there is a track record there is a scar there is a testament of death that must happen I presume we are going to pray tonight because it looks like we are in a funeral service you know what you do in a funeral service you dig the ground and you carry the dead body and throw it in but when you throw the body in the funeral service you don't expect it to come out but what we are engaging tonight is a mystery that when you are thrown in the grave then you are ready to come out after a few days of silence suddenly suddenly you begin to shoot against gravity with another life and that small tiny seed will now become a tree that birds will come and nest they will be grateful that you paid the price every food you eat today is because a seed volunteered to die listen to me carefully if seeds stop dying you stop rising too the reason why we continue to live is because there are seeds that are dying they died last year the moment rain starts falling isn't it amazing that when rain starts falling that's the right time for the seed to die seeds die during rain rain that should give life but that's when seeds die and then life comes from it we're going to pray in the next 10 minutes it's going to be a general prayer before i lead you find whatever corner outside this is you and god just play worship for us and you are going to say lord the death that must turn me into a new wineskin let it happen to me tonight the death that must happen oh god for the glory that this generation is waiting for don't be afraid the sacrifice Lord you are calling me to be a prophet to the nations but there is a level of death please pray this is between you and God let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy love. Hey, hey, hey. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy love. Pray. Pray. Era ba she na na ma she na 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 na, era na na he na 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 he na 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 de. Lera sabaru jalis kamanda brati gala shobras kadi alhasa. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. But whoever loses it for my sake will gain it. We gain things in this kingdom by losing them. 
Ala baranda zana kaparuza seketazi ana kaparuza sea. Ina balana ba, ina la la la, ina la la la, ina la la la. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Are there people praying tonight? Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Walk through me, yeah. live through me. Oh, come with the refiner's fire. 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 As the deer pants after the water brook, find a generation, my king. Find a generation that desires you more than life, more than wisdom, more than money, more than power. Find for yourself a bride adorned in her beauty. Yeah, yeah. everything turn me oh god to the wine skin that will host your power in this generation turn me oh god to the wine skin that will host the end time anointing for miracles for wealth for signs for wonders Come in, I'm not 
kumi na nane Yeshua Hamashiach kumi na nane Yeshua Hamashiach kumi na nane kumi na nane kumi na nane Come in Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na nakane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na nakane Two or three more minutes But in a great house there are vessels of gold and of silver, of wood and of clay. Some are unto honor and others are unto dishonor. It belongs to you. Hey. Yeshua, I'm a Yeshua, I'm a Yeshua, Yeshu Hamashiach Komi na nakane Yeshu Hamashiach Komi na nakane You see, my brothers and my sisters One of the assignments of fire The primary purpose of fire was not just for demons it was for the saints it is the fire of the holy spirit it's not just holy ghost fire demons the fire not only refines not only purifies it can melt completely and then remold again it is not every time the fire comes to just purify sometimes that whole vessel needs to melt down for something new to come it is not every time god comes to adjust the old 
sometimes he comes to immerse you into his fire then remold you as something that has never been before Yeshua Hamashia Komina Nakane Yeshua I like you tonight to pray Lord whatever took your place in my life please return to your resting place is someone praying tonight I don't know how it got there but in this season arise majesty return to your resting place hey, hey, hey. Arise, my God, return to your place of rest. Yeshua, Hamashia, Omina Nakane, Yeshua, Hamashia. For some of us, is friends, some of us, is the obsession to succeed some of us is the obsession to be in ministry whatever has taken its place please dethrone it this night dethrone it this night for some of us is money that took its place reputation ego Revelation, the quest for the anointing. Komina nakane, komina nakane, komina nakane, ya Yesu. Yeshua, Hamashiach. In this season, let me tell you, the new wine of the spirit is moving from nation to nation, from continent to continent, finding the vessels that have the space there are all kinds of mantles graces that have not been seen before but they are searching for a new wine skin you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin you cannot put a new prophetic wine in an old prophetic wine skin a new apostolic wine in an old apostolic wine skin a new territorial wine in an old territorial wine skin let us leave the old and press for the new press for the new press for the new pray just one more minute and then we'll pray corporately that's why we came tonight without new wine you cannot have the new songs without new wine you cannot have the new sermons you will keep recycling the old copying from man of God to man of God it will take new wine to understand the rhythm of the spirit hallelujah praise the Lord listen to me we have a few more minutes just a few minutes and then we'll stop Acts chapter 26 and verse 22 there are times in your life listen where because of the kind of glory that is coming no matter how you release yourself you will still not have the capacity 
you will need to cry for an assistance from heaven he says having therefore obtained help of god i continue unto this day the reason i'm still standing from glory to glory i saturated my effort at a point but having obtained help from god i continue to this day having obtained help from god in the apostolic ministry in the prophetic ministry in the pursuits to bring the wealth of the kingdom to the saints in the pursuit to doing this and that whatever it is there are times when you stretch yourself to the limit and it still cannot make for the size of the glory you will need to turn to the helper of zion it says having therefore obtained help of god i continue it takes the help of god to keep going there are times you will reach your elastic limit you will stretch and break to pieces you will still not meet god's standard is someone ready to cry for help from heaven lord assist me assist me let 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 the divine help the alignment it will take to command the wealth of the kingdom in this season lord assist me there is only so much i can do the alignment that will be required to carry the apostolic and the prophetic grace i cry for help having obtained help from god i continue god is the helper of men god can help you he can help you rise he can help you stand he can help you reign he can help you conquer he has not stopped being the helper the Holy Spirit is called the helper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pair yourselves in twos if you can. Just hold someone those under the anointing or just alone just leave them but hold your hands you are going to cry to heaven agreeing with that person say lord a superior realm of results a new dimension of grace glory that is all encompassing i receive it agree 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 with somebody pray outside pray those online pray this is the season, oh God, of the glory that excels in ministry, in business, the glory that excels. Shakatakata, bakaparoko to shekete, ebrekete lekete kete kete, shakato sebaru zapani kata, the glory that excels, the weightiness, the desirability that excels, that I become the desire of nations. I become the desire of kings. Please pray. Shekete kete kete. El bragado la paruta sekete. E koto 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 bash. El bragado zasiana kata. Rapa pa paruto totosh. El dereke tosh kele bash. Rakata paruto shobregede. Prato so si dabiash e prakato se 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 kata from baruda so pragete baladaba e prokoto se kete le barash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm forty-five, verse twelve. I believe it is. The Lord just put it in my heart. This is the level that God is taking us to. I hope you remember the teaching I did about Tyre and Sidon. The marketplace of the earth. Where the exchange is made. It says, and the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. 
it says even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor there is an investment of the spirit that comes upon your life listen i want to show you how this relates to extraordinary fruitfulness there are realms where you will not beg and search for your sacrifice and your investment will cause nobles to come with what you would have looked for the daughter of tyre will come with a gift the gift you would have been searching for and then the rich among the people not the poor there is a grace because you left looking for the glory of wealth to seek his face he will cause those who have the glory of the wealth to come to entreat your favor listen that means wealth is not favor because there is a favor that even the rich are looking for what is it they are not coming to just look at you there is something money cannot buy the rich will entreat your favor they will come to you and it will be a privilege to give them audience i like you to pray and say lord on account of the glory you are putting upon my life even in this season let the daughter of tyre begin to come with her gift and let the kings of these systems come with their treasures to entreat my favor please lift your voice and pray pray with understanding pray with understanding because I have subscribed to the glory that comes from your face not the glory that comes from wealth not the glory that comes from human wisdom not the glory that comes from human might the glory that comes from knowing you let the daughter of Tyre come with her gift let the nobles of the earth begin to entreat my favor pray for koinonia in this season Shabakato Sabaranda Kata. Kings coming to entreat your favor. Hallelujah. The Bible says that a time will come when seven virgins, it was a prophetic statement seven virgins will hold on to one man that spiritual jew they are not holding on to him just because he's handsome there is something that the tribe he comes from carries and seven dimensions that have not been seen come to you and say we want to be part of your life we want to be featured in your destiny such a force of attraction such a force of attraction dimensions that have never been seen they will come and latch on to you father whatever is for me in this season by the grace you are putting on my life it must be attracted to me in this season lift your voice and pray like a believer you are placing an anointing you are placing a grace and a glory you are my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory you are my glory you are my inheritance hallelujah hallelujah time will fail me to share with you the testimonies of the level of ease that your life will step into when you truly carry the glory of God the glory of God is a voice it can speak it can speak to kings that the things you once desired will come to you at a platter 
because his glory is upon you he says arise shine for your light has come not just that the glory of the Lord is risen upon you the glory that excels this is the glory that will humble the arrogance of the kings of the earth if all you look for is money you will be like them if all you look for is human scientific wisdom you will be like them if all you look for is human systems of fortification but press for his face understand his ways and let him invest upon you a glory that excels and you will watch with wonder the way God will draw glory out of your life there are new and strange kinds of anointings that are coming upon the body of Christ there are new and strange dimensions of the workings of the spirit as has never been seen the times and the seasons already signify it and our own is just to say maranatha come lord come with all of these things come come the body of christ is stepping into certain offices certain levels of spiritual possibilities that micah for prophecy of the church ascending we will humble the pride of kings the church is not a nuisance to civilization no God is giving us a voice that cannot be silenced a voice that not the rich will ignore the poor will not ignore politicians will not ignore but our price is to become the new wine skin that can carry that new wine and when the new wine finds a resting place then there is no limit to what you can do let me round up when the feast was about to finish and Jesus turned water to wine the first to taste of that wine were the rulers of the ceremony listen carefully that wine was not designed for the general congregation the wine was a statement and so the attention of the kings they were the first to taste of the wine all other kinds of wines could be taken by everyone but the kings took it and they said where did you get this people bring the best at the beginning but you have saved the last that means the investment that God is giving us is to subdue the gatekeepers of territories not just for things common no the gatekeepers of territories access to the heart of nobles because one 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 madman in gadara listen one madman in gadara is equivalent to 10 cities we don't have the time again to go one by one to every city no god will be giving us the madman in gadara and the woman by the well god is will use one person like an arrow from a man's quiver and hit nations with it that's what god is doing listen to me and hear what i'm saying again prophetically it will no longer be one by one go to this there's no time for that again so he will give us a grace one grace that can touch a voice that will make all other voices hear him that's territorial dominion it no longer will be people one by one it's a waste of time he will be taking us to the madmen at gadara for the sake of the decapolis he will be taking us to the women at the well for the sake of all who will come with her all those who have the voice of systems god will send us to them that is why we need a glory that is higher than what they have otherwise they will not hear the word of the lord upon you it was nicodemus that came to jesus by night and said rabbi we know 
that thou art a man not i know not i know not i know meaning that we have been watching you and we have seen that even though we don't have this we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things the mountain of the lord's house it will look like a dream until you see it happening until you see that god gives you the heart of kings and then you plant the seed of righteousness that in one day a nation can be saved because their kings are saved was it not in one day nebuchadnezzar signed a decree and said everywhere across babylon let the god of shadrach meshach and abednego that anyone who does not worship that god should be killed there are spectacular things that god will do to men that will change men i'm available oh. i don't know about you but my heart is listen let me tell you the truth and i sincerely tell you this the concept of church as we know it is changing fast it will no longer just be a man of god and plenty people just no 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 it's going to be the level of access to territories that god will give you keys to territories men who will walk like gods upon the earth that you will speak and both your members and your non-members will be forced to hear because of what you hold this is what god is giving please i like you to be sensitive these seven days don't be casual we're we're at the edge of the unfolding of a new move of god it's like a boiling pot that is already tilting and god is doing something very prophetic and very apostolic father we give you all the praise tonight we declare by the spirit of the living god that we are ready to be the carriers of this glory that excels the glory that will bring you much gain the glory that will make a man more priceless than a nation we pray oh god for the help that comes from you to go through the sacrifice of the transformation that will be required to make us new wine skins so that we'll be able to effectively host this wine but we pray oh god maranatha come let these dimensions come without hindrance we pray even for this house let this house as a corporate entity be transformed into a new wine skin thank god for what you have done before but we are ready to receive what you are doing now in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ